Jaguars are the upstarts of the NFL, and they've crashed the high-stakes game of the wild card party. Led by quarterback Mark Brunel, the Jags have won five in a row and now brace for a playoff battle with the Bills. We belong here. This is a great opportunity for us. We want to enjoy the moment. We want to understand the opponent very well, but we want to allow our own athletic ability and our own instincts to take over and just go up there and play like heck and try to make something happen. The Bills represent pro football's establishment and have mastered the game of survive and advance. But the proud core of Buffalo's reign is showing its age. Can they summon up the stamina for one more run? It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Buffalo Bills on ABC's AFC Wild Card Playoff. Are you ready for some football? Ready! Catch all the hits, the bangs, and the blocks. Now it all comes down to do or die. One team lives, the other says bye-bye. We gotta get ready, we gotta get right. It's time to kick off this wild card fight. So get ready. I mean, get ready. Are you ready for some football? A postseason party? Yes, sir. Stadium in Orchard Park, New York, where the Buffalo Bills have the best postseason mark in NFL history. A perfect 9-0. Today, they host the expansion Jacksonville Jaguars in an AFC wild card playoff. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick. It's great to have you with us. The Jacksonville Jaguars arrived even faster than they thought they would. And here's what you need to know about this second-year expansion team. They finished the season with an AFC best five game winning streak and they were the only conference team that went through the month of December undefeated. Their quarterback Mark Brunel led all NFL quarterbacks in both passing and rushing yards. And as I bring in my partner Joe Theismann, Joe Jacksonville comes in here for their po first postseason game ever with everything clicking. It's one thing you cannot say about the Buffalo Bills. Well, you're so right, Mike. As a matter of fact, the Buffalo Bills have the great Bruce Smith and their defense to thank for them being here. As a matter of fact, their offense really has been ineffective most of the year. But I'll tell you, they're, in a, res they're a resilient bunch, and probably the most resilient one of all is Jim Kelly. Last week, he showed that resiliency in the fourth quarter by completing six of eight passes for two touchdowns. The only reason he was able to do that was he got protection from his offensive line. And if you're looking for a key in this football game today, that's what it's going to be. The offensive line of the Buffalo Bills is going to have to give Jim Kelly time and create some holes for Thurman Thomas if they want to move on in the playoffs. All right, Joe, and the Bills desperately want another run at that Super Bowl title while the Jaguars are looking to continue their miracle season. Back with the opening kickoff to the AFC Wild Card game in a moment. In their first two seasons, the Jacksonville Jaguars played to an average temperature of 61 degrees. The worst weather conditions they ever played in, it was 42. They came up here expecting it to be much worse. They catch the first break of the playoffs. It is 48 degrees for Buffalo, a balmy 48 at kickoff. Steve Christie to kick off to Bucky Brooks and Ricky Bell, who waited to go along. And the playoffs are underway. Brooks from the four. Across the 30. There is a marker down back at the 22-yard line. Raymond Jackson shoved him out of bounds after an excellent return, but it will come back. The Jaguars in the last four games have been nearly penalty free. Illegal block in the back, above the waist, number 35 on the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. 
For Jacksonville's offense, quarterback Mark Brunel led the NFL with over 4,300 passing yards and rushed for another 396. Means is the running back. McCardell and Smith, both over 1,000 yards receiving. Mitchell and Brown, the tight ends. Up front, the bookend tackles. Vaselli and Searcy along with Coleman, Wydell, and Tilski. So the Jaguars have to start from their own nine. Brunel to throw on first down and Means can't hold it. Buffalo's defense led by Bruce Smith, number two on the all-time sack list, joined up front by Hanson and Washington. The linebackers, Pop, Spielman, the leading tackler, Covington and Rodgers. In the secondary, Burris, Matt Stevens, the rookie, Schultz, and Thomas Smith. And it has been the defense that has carried the Buffalo Bills. They were brilliant a week ago, especially Bruce Smith against the Kansas City Chiefs. Natron Means. 110 yards a week ago, nothing there. Mike, Bruce Smith gets so much credit for his pass rush ability and overlooked a little bit is his run-stopping ability. He just takes a hard inside against Baselli. He's going right with the flow. There's no way Baselli gets a chance to cut him off. And once Bruce gets a step on somebody, you can't stop him. The Jaguars on third and long will go with three wide receivers. Brunel nearly sacked, throws it away. The flag is down. Is it a safety or not? Jim Jeffcoat had Brunel at the goal line. Mike, I think they're going to call it on about the one-yard line because his momentum took him back in. When Brunel stopped, Smith took him back in. I don't think they're going to call a safety. It'll be like the half-yard line. Intentional grounding, number eight, at the one-yard line. Fourth down. Lost him down. You'll see Bruce Smith push the pocket from the left side. Now, great job by the defense. Brunel has nowhere to go. Baselli tries to run him around. Smith does it. Smith causes him to come inside. Now, you see, he was not in the end zone. That's just a good play by Jeffco. Now they have to punt it out of the end zone. Brian Barker has to be careful not to step on the line. The rush is on, and he got it away somehow. Burris. At the 42, and Burris buried in his tracks. Excellent coverage by Bucky Brooks. Here's Buffalo's lineup. Jim Kelly, after a miserable start and a bad hamstring, has played much better down the stretch. Thurman Thomas at running back, playing on a bad ankle. The wide receivers, Tasker Reed and early Lonnie Johnson, the tight end. Mike, the defense did their job in the first series. Now, if Buffalo goes down and puts some points on the board, all the pressure falls on the shoulders of a young Jaguar team. Give you the rest of Buffalo's offense after the first play. Kelly starts from the Jaguar. 43-yard line, great field position. And Kelly to throw on first down. Over the middle, complete. Quinn early at the Jacksonville 28. Aaron Beasley on the coverage. Give you the rest of Buffalo's offense. Thurman Thomas at running back, playing with a bad ankle. The wide receivers, Tasker Reed and early. Lonnie Johnson, the tight end. Bill's going hurry up. Thurman Thomas with his first carry. Inside the 25 to the 24. Up front, that offensive line has had a problem with injuries. Fina, Brown, the 11-year veteran, Hull, Ostrowski, and Parker. And Dana Hall, the strong safety, is the injured Jaguar. We've got a timeout on the field. Early first quarter, Buffalo with the momentum back in a moment. ABC Sports coverage of the AFC Wild Card is brought to you by Budweiser, now appearing in a fridge near you. Bud Bowl 97, Battle in the Bayou. 
Southwest Airlines with fares so low you have the freedom to go places. Prudential bringing strength and stability to America's families through insurance, health care, real estate, and financial services. And Ford Taurus, more of what America wants in an automobile. Bills facing a second and six. Hall leaves Travis Davis. Checks in at strong safety for Jacksonville. This is a great down for Jim Kelly, Mike. Second down and six. The defense isn't quite sure what they're going to do. If it was second and eight, you figure, hey, he's got to throw. But with second and six, spread him out. He can run Thurman Thomas off the corner either way, or he can try and work the middle of the football field to Tasker inside or one of his tight ends. Jim Kelly, third all-time in NFL postseason, over 3,600 yards. More interceptions than touchdowns, however. Shovel pass to Thomas. Thurman Thomas to the 14-yard line. First down, Bills. And Atlanta last week nearly killed Jacksonville with screen passes. And that's the thing. You just got to try and figure out a way to get Thurman Thomas the ball in space. They're going to start to the right. Jim Kelly looking like he wants to go downfield. Thurman does a nice job of just weeding through the traffic and making the play. Doing a good job protecting the ball, too. First down inside the 15-yard line. Thomas. Room to run outside. To the 8-yard line. Travis Davis horse collared him there. When they get Thurman Thomas going, Mike, this is an offense that is so hard to stop. But we talked about the offensive line being a key. Jerry Ostrowski, number 60, comes across. Now, he's just moving along, does a nice job of kicking out Kevin Hardy. Thurman, with patience, turns up inside and gets the game. Second and four. Thurman. Stuffed after a gain of maybe a half yard. On defense for Jacksonville on the line, Lagerman, Davey, Yurkovich, and Clyde Simmons, the number nine man on the all-time sack list. The linebackers, Kevin Hardy, the rookie with tremendous speed, McManus and Robinson, the secondary in a moment. Third and three. Kelly at time. Thomas wide open. Touchdown. Mike, that's a question again of a great job by the offensive line picking up the blitzes inside. Here come the linebackers inside. McManus tries to fill. Thurman Thomas is wide open in the flat, and he dropped one last week. And I'll guarantee you that's exactly what went through his mind. He wasn't going to drop this one. Christie for the point after. A 43-yard drive, the last 28 all. Thurman Thomas, 11 on the ground, 17 receiving, 7-0 Bills. The Jacksonville defense talking about that last sequence of plays. Thurman Thomas couldn't have been more wide open, no, Joe. It, it, it seemed a little bit ill-conceived as a blitz. What happened is Jacksonville wants to bring. They bring the linebackers, and it looks like they want Robinson to run all the way and cover Smith out into the flat. Or, excuse me, Thurman Thomas. Here comes Kevin Hardy inside, McManus inside, and there's really nobody there. All that can be is a screw-up in coverage when you try and bring four to the weak side. And there they are. That's the coaches going over everything. That's John Pease on the right, Tom Coughlin in the middle. Great start for the Bills, and Jacksonville's got to be wound a little tight right now in their first playoff game. Brooks from the one. Bucky Brooks with his second good return takes it out to the 26-yard line. Nice shot on special teams by Mark Pike. The playoff difference between these two clubs is astounding, of course. The Jaguars, 23 players who have ever been in the playoffs, 73 games, five have been in Super Bowls. Look at the Bills, 49 Super Bowls combined with 35 players and 333 playoff games overall. Single back for Jacksonville. 
Brunel, and then they could bootleg and throws it away. Pete Mitchell, the only one out there, but right on him was Sam Rogers. Well, what happens is they want to run a little bootleg. Okay, fine. If you want to do that and the safety's not there, you can get it off. In that case, Kurt Schultz, number 24, came up on the right side and came right away as soon as the ball was snapped. Good decision by Wade Phillips to put pressure on Brunel. They're not afraid to go after him, even though they know he can run. Wade Phillips has done a sensational job with this defense. They're number one in the NFL against the rush, giving up only 3.4 yards a carry. And the crowd really in it. Means nowhere to go. Gang tackled after a gain of one. Mike, I felt like when the Buffalo Bills got Ted Washington on defense, it really helped out the big guys. There he is in the middle. He's just going to stop this thing. You can't block him one-on-one. -on -one. He just makes sure that the center and the guards can't get to the linebackers and allows them to make, make plays. Washington, the former San Francisco 49ers, simply stuffs the middle. Tipping the scales at about 340 pounds, which has created a big problem for Kevin Gilbert. Three wide receivers on third and nine. Here comes the blitz. Means on the screen. And Jeff Cope was right there to make the tackle. The Wiley 14-year veteran. That's the second great big play he made. He sacked Brunel the first time. This time he's over there on the other side. And now he sets up and stops the screen. Good job of playing off of Leon Searcy, number 72, and being in the right place. Barker to punt again. His numbers on the year. Burris waits at his own 39. Low line drive, but a long way downfield, and Burris has trouble inside his own 20. And a flag is down at the end of the play. Ty Halleck with a great job getting downfield and making the tackle after a 57-yard punt. And Barker was fortunate that that one didn't come back a long way. That had no hang time. Well, Mike, just so you know how good a punt that was, he was kicking into the wind. Now, as you look at the field where the Buffalo Bills are on the sidelines, the wind is blowing actually in their face. A little caddy corner left. Illegal block in the back above the waist, number 94 on the return team. 10 yard penalty. First down. So the Bills will have it deep in their own territory. When we come back, they lead this wild card game 7 0. The Minnesota Vikings tackle the defending Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys. It's game two of an NFL wild card doubleheader next on ABC Sports. Tom Coughlin and his Jaguars got into the playoffs in dramatic fashion. You've heard of the shot heard round the world. We'd like to show you the shot heard round Jacksonville, Florida. It is from 31 yards. There's the snap. The place with the kick is up. It's on the way. And it's so good. It's so oh good. My God. It's so good. If you haven't heard yet, the Jaguars beat the Falcons this afternoon. The score 19 to 17. In just its second year, the team is ready to get off the porch and run with the NFL's big dogs. This town has been turned upside down. Playoffs, baby, come on. That's what we're talking about. It is very much a college atmosphere in Jacksonville, Florida. They have embraced this team. And many made the trip up here. Holmes will start in the backfield on this series for the Bills. And he's wrapped up in a hurry as they try the sweep. Well, you know, Mike, I think it's important for Jacksonville to settle down now. They, they were like a chase, catching a snowball coming downhill there for a moment. The Bills get good field position. They go in and score. They get stopped again. Here they just have to settle down. And Jerron's just got to get his troops relaxed and let him go play. Second and 11 for Jim Kelly. The cook is complete and they won't get a lot out of that as Quinn Early makes the catch and hit by Robert Massey. Jim Kelly continuing to get good protection. Good five-step drop. You know, really, there's nothing wrong with Jim's arm. Everybody says he can't do this and he can't do that. He just needs some time to do it. Third and three, draw play to Holmes. Trying to get outside and Brackens is right there to make the tackle at the 14-yard line. The sensational rookie out of the University of Texas. 
Tony Brackens, the last month of December, has put on a show. And here he shows not only his quickness, but his strength. He knocks Fina back, good vision on the runner, then plays off and makes the tackle. Chris Moore to punt with the win to Chris Hudson. Beautiful high floater and Hudson back at his own 37 yard line can't go anywhere Irvin down quickly on special teams a one yard return after a 49 yard punt seven nothing Bills first quarter seven nothing Bills over the Jaguars hope you'll be with us on Thursday night at 8 Eastern for the Nokia Sugar Bowl in-state rivals and national powers Florida and Florida State will have their rematch the Seminoles looking to win their second national title in the last four years will go against Heisman winner Danny Werfel and a Gator Club that's looking to avenge its only loss of the season Thursday night January 2nd 8 Eastern the Nokia Sugar Bowl Bryce pop who has been bothered by a groin injury close to full speed and able to start today Mark Brunel has got to have a little nerves, Joe. What was your first playoff experience like? Well, just about the way his has been. Right now in the third series, you settle down. Now you get a chance to play football. Now you're down to business. For the third straight series, they start with a pass, and Covington with a sack. Damon Covington out of NC State has started the last three games for Mark Maddox, and they are coming after Brunel. Mike, we talked about the job that Buffalo's offensive line has to do to protect Kelly. That's the thing that Jacksonville's line has to do and have it. You'll see him right here. Covington's coming right up the middle now. Natron Means supposed to block him. He's supposed to. You can't lower your head, Natron. You're not going to block him. It's yeah. going to be real important that the backs pick up the backers if Brunel wants time to throw. Jacksonville has run seven plays. They have lost 11 yards. Four-man rush this time. Nearly intercepted. Covington had his hands on it. Couldn't hold it. Keep in mind, this is the number two offense in the NFL, the number one pass offense, and they can't get anything started. There's one or two ways that Kevin Gilbride can go right now, Mike. He can try and run something real simple, get his team back over, talk to him again, or he can just try and throw one down the field, maybe match up Jimmy Smith against Jeff Burroughs, and take a chance on an interference call. Brunel only one of his first five. Here comes the blitz. Brunel hangs in there and completes it to Smith. First down, Jacksonville. Excuse me, he's going to be short of the first down at the 42. But at least they got a positive play, Mike. It's the, the first, first one. It's the first positive play for Jacksonville. It's something to build on. But again, the Bills doing a terrific job on defense. Burris back waiting for the punt of Brian Barker, who hit that 59-yarder the last time. Buffalo drops out of the rush. Barker hangs it up into the wind for Burris at the six. And Burris takes it back across the 10 to about the 13-yard line after another beautiful punt. 51 yards from Brian Barker. 7-0, back in a moment. Welcome to Freedom in the Air, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. The teams that dominated the AFC in recent years are flying high into the playoffs. But what passing attack led to a postseason berth for the new kids on the block? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Buffalo, where the Bills are leading the Jacksonville Jaguars 7 0. Let's check in with Mark Malone. Mark. Thanks, Mike. We've talked all day today about how important the offensive line is, how important Jim Kelly is in that K-Gun offense. Really, the guy that makes it work and the guy that the Jaguars were most concerned about was Thurman Thomas, and they used him extremely well in that first drive. Early against the 4-3, of course, the shovel pass, drawing the rush, and then Thurman breaks loose for the big game. And then they run the patented counter tray again from the spread formation. Thurman picking his way through the defense and picking up another big gain and then of course a touchdown pass when they tried to blitz Kelly Thurman slipping out into the flat and he gets the touchdown Thurman Thomas is one of the most prolific 
uh, postseason backs there is. Here's his numbers on that drive. Three rushes, 11 yards, two receptions for 17. Two of those receptions, first downs, and, of course, the one touchdown. They've got to get him the football, Mike. And Mark, even with a bad ankle, he went over 1,000 yards again, matching Barry Sanders with eight straight seasons. Kelly throws to Quinn early. It's been his favorite target. Across the 20, may have the first down out of the 24. Kelly has been sharp early. He really has, Mike. And the key for Jim Kelly on offense is to have the ability to step up into the line. That's what the guys in the middle are doing. See Ken Hull, Ruben? Look at that. They're just there. See that? There's no right here. There's this big pocket for him to step into. Kelly with another shovel pass, and this one is picked off. Intercepted by Clyde Simmons. Touchdown. Holy cow, what a huge play for Jacksonville. You can't go to the well too often. It worked for him once against Clyde. He saw it once as a veteran. He's not going to let it happen again. 11 years out of Western Carolina, and Jim Kelly suffers his 28th playoff interception. Huge play for Simmons because this team had been dominated. Well, the first time, Mike, we saw Thurman make that catch and reception on the touchdown drive, he had to weave through traffic. This time, he was trying to do the same thing. Clyde just laid in the weeds and waited for him. Mike Hollis for the point after. And we are tied at seven. Mike Hollis's extra point is good. Clyde's right here. They're going to try and run this underneath. He's just going to hang right there, wind up taking it in for the TD. He comes upfield, sees what's going on. He never took his eyes off Kelly. Focused on him all the way. There's another look. He tries to throw it. See, Fina went to the ground too quick. That way, Clyde's still standing up, looking at what's going on. Then he does a good job of protecting the ball. Turnovers are so critical in playoff games. Look what happens if you are plus three. If you have three more turnovers than your opponent, you win 87.8% of the time. Plus two, 80% of the time. Even plus one, you win 71.9% of your ball games. And if you're minus one, you only win 28. I want to know how you win 71.9. <laughs> I mean, that, that always baffles me because somehow or other there's a quarter that gets thrown in there they factor in Jim Kelly's had a problem with interceptions this year especially at the beginning of the season let me tell you something about Jim Kelly it don't matter to him as far as he's concerned it's over and done with I'm going back and I'm going to do what I have to do it was his first pass not caught by a Buffalo Bill Clyde Simmons who was all pro with the Philadelphia Eagles Moles will receive the kick at the eight yard line. The speedy rookie breaks a tackle. Moles across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Tonight on ABC, beginning at 8 Eastern, two All Star holiday specials. First, Drew Carey featured with some of America's favorite stars in Caesar's Palace 30th anniversary celebration. And then Bill Cosby hosts a celebration of America's music with Tony Bennett, Stevie Wonder, Natalie Cole, and more. Both all-new specials tonight on ABC. So Kelly goes back to work with his offensive unit from his own 32-yard line. Mike, I think they got to start running Thurman Thomas. Jim's thrown a lot of passes, but I think you got to get the ground game going. Thomas, and around, flea flicker. And incomplete. Off the hands of Quinn early. Nice coverage by Mickey Washington. And a good job by the secondary as a whole for the Jaguars. They were not going to be fooled. Great discipline by both corners. Buffalo loves to run reverses. They do. And this they figure, okay, we're going to show them one. But no, we're not going to do it. Jim, you look down the field. Early trying to do a good job. Just lally gagging a little bit. The suckers the defensive back end didn't fall for it. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz. Good protection. Kelly throws to Tasker, but he'll only pick up about four yards. Tasker wrapped up in a hurry by Robert Massey. 
Tasker is critical to this passing offense. And Mike, as the game settles in, you get to see what people want to do. Kelly wants to work outside to the wide receivers. Jacksonville wants to bring linebackers up the middle to try and pressure him. So far, Jacksonville has not been able to get to him. Third and six. Kelly throws, Quinn early, first down. Gain of 15 on that throw. Little under fake to Thurman. He moves across. Jim just doesn't hardly drop at all. Just sets and fires. Quinn early already has four catches for 50 yards. They want to screen. Kelly having to scramble. Brackens from behind. He ran through the tackle and slides at the 31. John Fina threw a nice block for him. And the old wheels can still do it. Wouldn't it be something at the end of this game? Kelly rushing yards out does Brunel. That's something you wouldn't expect. But Brackens makes a big mistake here. Instead of trying to just make a play on Kelly. Okay, great pursuit. Just tackle him. Don't try and knock the ball out. Just tackle him. Kelly picks up 15 yards because Brackens tried to make a play instead of just doing his job. First down, Bills. Thurman Thomas. Just back to the line of scrimmage. Yurkovich on the bottom of the pile. And the former Green Bay Packer still down. 295-pound defensive lineman. You know why the, the fans are booing? Because they think it's a ploy to slow down the offense a little bit. And these Bills fans... They understand what's going on with their football team. They know that once they get a rhythm going, they want to keep it going. And I don't think it's the case at all. I think John's down legitimately. They are ready for the playoffs again here in Buffalo. The war paint is out. Who will ever forget Yurkovich with that knee injury when he was chopped by Eric Williams in the playoffs? It was a legal block, but only because of the rules he said I didn't say it was illegal I said it was unethical number 64 the left side of your screen right there you see him he's moving in to try and make the play and he gets pushed down and winds up really at the bottom of a pile more than anything else he landed hard on that right knee Yurkovich now up and able to walk off under his own power He's an important run stopper in that defensive line. Kelvin Pritchett, number 94, will come in at that right tackle spot. Second and 10 for the Bills. Kelly under pressure, steps up and throws deep. And throws it away. Nice play by Kelly just to get rid of the ball. And you're seeing a little bit more pressure from that Jacksonville front wall. Well, Mike, Jim Kelly isn't going to run away from anybody, but he has great pocket presence. He has the ability to move around, not see the rush, but feel it, and then get to a place where he can make a throw. Third and ten now for Buffalo. Kelly right now the leading rusher in the ball game, 15 yards. Four-man rush, plenty of time. Nail as he got to the 15 yard line by Chris Hudson, but it's a gain of 17. Andre Reed with great patience just comes off the ball, not in a hurry, gets down inside of Massey. Once he gets inside, he's as strong as there anybody is. Doesn't do it much anymore, run the inside routes, but still very effective. Another first down, Buffalo. Kelly with time. Ronnie Johnson, the tight end of the two. Dana Hall saved the touchdown. Kelly moves this time a little bit to his left. Lots of time to look at what he wants to look at. Lonnie Johnson does a nice job of finding the soft spot in the defense. Picks up the big first down. First and goal, Buffalo. 
Tim Tyndale will be the running back along with Thurman Thomas. Kearns, the tight end, also in there. Four downs backfield. Kelly to throw in the flat. Klein couldn't hold it. Tony Klein, the tight end, was wide open and couldn't make the catch. If you remember the Kansas City game last week, it's almost the same play. Little play action fake inside to freeze the linebacker. Then Klein's going to go out. Wide open. Kelly tries to make this throw nice and simple and easy to him, and he misjudges it. Winds up hitting him in the head. Right off his head and his shoulder pad. Dana Hall, a strong safety, is really full. Thurman Thomas. Touchdown. The Bills made that drive look easy. That's a good job by that offensive line, Mike. They've given Jim Kelly protection during the drive. That time, Thurman Thomas didn't hit the hole real hard. A lot of patience, just picked and choose and picked his way into the end zone. And walked in. Christie to the point after. He's 35 out of 35 this year. You know, Mike, when your offensive linemen have a chance to stroll into the end zone, it guarantees you. Here's Reuben Brown. He's going to come around and watch this. There goes the guard, number 78, 79, excuse me. He walks into the end zone. If he's walking in, you can pretty much guess assured Thurman Thomas is. There's the wall. He's just cruising on in. Good job by that big O-line. That unit has been banged up all year, and consequently, Jim Kelly got banged up because he didn't have the protection. Today, he has had excellent protection. One hundred twenty seven to four is the yardage total so far. If you join this late, the Jaguars got on the scoreboard because of an interception by defensive end Clyde Simmons. Or it could be much worse. That time the defense was shredded for a long drive. Well, I mean, everybody's everybody's looking at pictures, Mike. Everybody wants to see what's going on. Where is Kelly finding the holes in this defense? Thurman Thomas now number one all time in point postseason points, 120. Bell hands it off to Brooks. Another good return for Brooks after the 28 yard line. And the tackle made by Robert Coons. Mark Brunel has had one of those fantasy seasons for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Number one in passing yards, number one in rushing yards for a quarterback. Six 300 games, nobody was better. And 63.4% completion rate, and the only quarterback to take every snap this year. I did that in my first four years total. Did you? Total. That's I needed four years to do what he did in one. It would take a lot of guys four years. The noise is very tough. Flags are down. The pass incomplete. Intended for Smith. Well, the Jaguars are hoping this is against the Bills. Offside. Defense. 78, five yards penalty, still first down. Well, they called Bruce Smith, but it looked like Phil Hansen in the middle of that line jumped early. You know, it's interesting. Talking to Tony Baselli, he says that Bruce Smith will jump off sides a little bit to try and unsettle him. He's just got to relax and can't go chasing him. First and five. Natron Means. Finally, some room to run, and Natron Means breaks it. Schultz. Trying to catch him from behind and does it to five. Until that 
run, the longest run of the year for Natron means 35 yards. That one went for 63. You want to call, you want to, uh, this is basically, Mike, a north-south run. He only had one guy to try and avoid, and the line just does a terrific job of giving him a place to go. Watch the offensive line come off the ball. They've got all the bills stood up. They've got a body on a body, and then he's gone. The first first down of the game for Jacksonville. Means. And here's where the Bills are so tough. They were brilliant a week ago against Kansas City. Mike, here's where the Jacksonville Jaguars have struggled on offense. They've always, they've been able to get in the red area, but for some reason their offense just has not been able to put points. Look at that. They're ranked 29th in the league compared to the Bills' fourth on defense. Second and goal just inside the five. Wade Phillips' unit came up big last week. Can they do it again? Brunel trying to change the play. And now he wants a timeout. Give one to the fans for that timeout. Mike, what Jacksonville is going to have to do in the red area, when these fans get going in particular, is Tom Coughlin is just going to have to say, listen, let's stay with one play. We're going to call it. We're going to have to run it. We're going to have to execute it. If they beat us, they beat us. Because if they do this every time they get in there, they don't have enough timeouts. They'd run out in a hurry. Let's go back to the 63-yard scamper by Natron Means. Tony Baselli comes down hard inside and just takes Bruce Smith all the way down. Now, Smith is off balance, so he can't recover. Now, here's the play from Natron's view. Look at that hole. Cuts it up inside. Stevens can't make the tackle. And Natron moving real well for a big guy. 240, getting all the way down to the five. Natron acquired from the San Diego Chargers, and he has really come on at the end of the season after he took the starting spot from James Stewart, gained over 100 yards a week ago. I think you've got to keep the ball in the hands of Mark Burnell. Allow him the option to either run it in or throw it in. Second and goal. Pete Mitchell in the slot to the right. He's got the best hands on the team. Draw play to Means. Uh-uh. Rodgers was right there. So they'll lose five. Wade Phillips likes to use a pressure defense. This time he brings them from the corner to try and squeeze the back or the quarterback. Nowhere to go. Watch Rodgers. Rodgers is coming off of here. You see Pop coming from the top side. Whether it was Brunel or Means, the linebackers were going to meet there. You could almost hear Natron say, uh-oh, there was nowhere to go. Third and goal. Brunel floats it for the end zone, and Mitchell with some contact back there with Matt Stevens, the pass incomplete. They'll have to go for the field goal. Pressure by Phil Hansen. Jacksonville put themselves in a must-throw situation by running the play they did on second down and losing five yards. And I think Mark Brunel took a shot on that one. He's been a resilient guy. I mean, he, you know, he hasn't been hurt all year. Mike Hollis, who's had an excellent year, comes on to try a 27-yard field goal. And the Jaguars convert on the drive. Brunel in some pain on the sideline. Well, Mike, as he goes back in the pocket, you're going to see some guys have a clear shot at him. He's going to raise his left arm to make a throw. Once he gets that arm up in the air, Hanson just buries his left shoulder into the ground. Watch his left shoulder. Excuse me, his right shoulder. His right shoulder just gets buried into the ground. And Hanson has had a tremendous year for Buffalo. 
Brunel being talked to on the sideline. Remember, he has taken every snap for his club all year long. And there is Rob Johnson, who has had no action whatsoever. And this would not be the place to get it. Fourth round draft pick out of USC. He hasn't taken his jacket off. That's a good indication for Burnell. The Bills have won 20 straight games when they have scored two touchdowns in the first quarter. They have done that with 10 seconds left. And the ever faithful fans here in Buffalo thinking just one more Super Bowl for, for this great group of core veterans who have carried him this far. Molds and Copeland deep to receive. Molds at the eight. Molds trying to get to the outside. Flags down everywhere. Molds to the 40 will check the penalty. Reggie Barlow made the tackle. Two or three flags went down on that return. So you would go back to the deepest one. Illegal block in the back, above the waist, on the return team, number 58. Ten-yard penalty, first down. That's the end of the first quarter with a score of the Bills 14, the Jaguars 10. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. ABC Sports coverage of the AFC Wild Card is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. Energizer still going. Long-lasting Energizer batteries keep going and going and going. And Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. 14-10 Bills as we start the second quarter in Buffalo. A balmy 48 degrees at kickoff time. And Bruce Smith, you have to give Tony Baselli a tip of the cap for his first quarter performance at left tackle against the all-world defensive end. Thurman Thomas. As the drive starts from the 10. Kevin Thomas, the ball carrier. You get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, no more. Yurkovic, who was injured early, makes the tackle. If you're into statistics and you're a Buffalo fan, you were delighted by the first quarter. They simply trampled Jacksonville with 127 total yards. Jacksonville 62. They came on one run by Natron Lee. And the time of possession is a bit surprising, too, by Jacksonville. Six minutes. Give it to the up man, Tinsdale, and he'll pick up four to the 14-yard line. Tinsdale only had 14 carries all during the regular season. Mike, somehow or other, two tight ends in a game, two backs, and Jim Kelly at quarterback. Those things don't go together. I mean, Kelly is more comfortable when he's spreading the field out. Basically, what amounts to a two-minute offense all the time. Jim Schaffer, the quarterback coach. They'll go to three wide receivers on third and six. Here comes the blitz. Kelly steps up to Reed, and Reed is popped as he got just to the 20-yard line. That should be short of a first down. Andre Reed says, you know, that stuff about going over the middle, I really can't take the beating anymore. Yeah, but again, my great play by Jerry Ostrowski, the guard. Watch what happens. Kelly is Kelly's going to get heat. He comes all the way out and just manages to chip him to allow Kelly to come in. McManus was coming clean at Kelly. Ostrowski got out, made a little bit of a chip block that allowed Jim to get it off. Moore, 13th in the conference this year to punt into the breeze. Hudson comes up, now back pedals to his 36. Reverses his field, nowhere to go, turns the corner. And got something out of him, 11-yard return after a punt of 43 yards. Gabe Northern on special teams for Buffalo.
13 10 to go first half Buffalo by four over Jacksonville we've been watching the matchup between young tackle Tony Baselli and all world Bruce Smith we talked to Baselli about going up against the NFL's all time leader in playoff sacks Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith causes problems for everybody. You know, he's a great player. He's probably, you could argue, one of the, the, the best defensive end pass rusher of all time. Reggie White, him, him and himself, are both the top two. So the problems he's going to create, I'm going to have to be uh, technically sound. I'm going to have to do a good job. Uh, but I feel if I play my game, I think it's going to be a good matchup. You're looking at a future Hall of Famer, a lock with 12 postseason sacks. And Baselli, what a great career he has in front of him. First and 10, Jacksonville. Excellent field position. Means. They strung it out pretty well, but Means kept the legs pumping and into Buffalo territory down to the 47. Covington makes the tackle. Natron Means has made a huge difference in this offense. In December, look at the numbers. Up every week, nearly 100 yards two games ago, and then he cracked the century mark against Atlanta when they needed the yards to get into the playoffs. Stewart had a toe injury combined with Means' performance. He lost his starting job. Second and five. Brunel, flags are down. He throws the means incomplete. There was some movement before that play. Yeah, but you know, Mike, I don't understand why they didn't stop the play when means moved. What happened is they allow they allow Brunel to go back in the pocket and take a shot. Why don't, if it's illegal motion, throw the flag right away. Illegal shift. Two men moving at the same time without one coming to a stop. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. So it wasn't just illegal motion. It was the illegal shift. So they figured one of the guys might have stopped. That's okay then. Good rule interpretation, Parker. Because the first time Means moves, bang, flag goes in. You know, your quarterback doesn't take a hit. Always looking out for those quarterbacks. Second and 10, Jacksonville. The official still talking about it. See, Marv Levy wants him to decline it. He wanted the penalty declined. He didn't want it accepted. That's what he's trying to get relayed to the official. But, you know, Bruce has already given the official his decision. And it looks like it's going to stand, and Marv is incensed on the sideline. Well, the coach always tries to make the determination, but he signals it well, into the captain. Gar uh, Gary Lane went to Bruce Smith, who made the decision on the field. He says, hey, look, you already told me. I can't go back and change it. Second and ten for Jacksonville. Short set, incomplete pass, in and out of the hands of Keenan McCardell. From Jacksonville's leading receiver, 85 catches, 1,100 and some yards on the year. Had a brilliant season of going to his first Pro Bowl. Tom Coughlin got real excited about him last year when they played a game against Cleveland. And McCardell, McCardell caught seven passes for a lot of yards as his head. I think this guy can help us. Jacksonville has yet to convert a third down in Brunel, only 25% so far. Four-man rush, good protection. Brunel throws, it's complete. They have a first down at the Buffalo 40-yard line. Willie Jackson on the catch, a gain of 12. Brunel with nice composure. He actually slipped before he threw that ball. And I think that's the advantage of him being in the shotgun. This time they bring Smith around the outside now he comes back inside to put pressure even though Brunel slips he still has plenty of time to step up and make the throw first third down conversion of the game for the Jaguars they have it just outside Buffalo's four movement Bryce pop jumped off sides and made contact so they'll whistle it dead and it seems like Jacksonville is beginning to adjust to the defense they're seeing from Buffalo. Encroachment, defense, number 95. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Mike, this is a very paced, very fast-paced football game. Offensively, Jim Kelly likes it that way. Kevin Gilbride, I think, would like to slow this thing down a little bit. And you can even see Buffalo's defense feeding off of, let's go get him, let's go get him. 
first and five. Brunel to throw against the four-man rush. Smith is out there, but Smith intercepts. Thomas Smith took it away from Jimmy Smith. Underthrown by Brunel. That was the throw by the quarterback that allowed Thomas Smith to come back and make the play. Jimmy Smith comes off the line. He's got him beat outside. If that ball's outside, he can make a play on it, but the ball is thrown inside. Thomas Smith just moves on over and makes the play. Timeout on the field. 14 for the Bills. The Jaguars have 10. Thomas Smith with the interception in the end zone to keep the score 14-10 Buffalo. And how rare is that? Mark Brunel has not thrown an interception until now since November 24th. 129 passes in a row. The game we did with Jacksonville against Seattle, he threw the exact same route to Smith. The pass was underthrown, but the ball was tipped up and Smith made the catch. And right now, Smith is still down on the turf here in Buffalo. Buffalo goes back to work. The pass out in the flat. Is it a catch? No, it's incomplete. Thomas hit quickly by Chris Hudson, the free safety. That was, that was a very unique wrinkle that Buffalo put in. This time, they're going to fake the reverse and dump the ball off to Thurman Thomas. So what they're doing is they're saying to Jacksonville, you go play our reverses. We're going to find other ways to get the ball up the field. Jacksonville, a hard-pursuing defense. They said they had to be very conscious of all those reverses. Here comes the blitz. All out, flags are down. They may have gotten there too quickly. The sack by Eddie Robinson. But Kevin Hardy crossed the line too quickly from the outside, number 51. Offside, defense, number 51. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Kevin Hardy tried to time his movement with the cadence. Here he comes from the outside. He just crosses the line. Didn't quite figure out what Jim Kelly wanted to do. Second and five now for Buffalo. Kelly with a short set. The quick out complete to Quinn early. He's to the 35 for a first down. Aaron Beasley on the tackle. Aaron Beasley, a rookie out of West Virginia. He's going he's gonna to give Quinn a lot of room. Can't even see him in a picture hardly. He goes out, just plants at eight yards, turns. Kelly's got the ball out to him in a quick. Thurman Thomas as they get back to the ground. And Jacksonville's done a pretty decent job against Thurman Thomas. I still feel, Mike, as this game continues to go on, Thurman Thomas's presence is going to have to be felt for Buffalo to be able to control this game totally. Thomas, seven carries, 13 yards. His first two rushes, he had 10. Since then, he's been shut down. Kelly to Early. Quinn Early to midfield, another first down. 15 yards on the catch. And Quinn Early, six for 75 so far. At that time, Jacksonville tried to pull a defensive lineman out into the coverage. Jeff Lagerman, he slips. And there's a hole right where he's supposed to be. Quinn Early makes the reception. And Jim Kelly has been finding the open spots. Derek Holmes checks in as the running back. Give Thomas a breather. Kelly forced out of the pocket this time. Now throws over the middle. Complete and short to Quinn Early. Eddie Robinson makes the tackle. Early picked up as a free agent from New Orleans to give them some speed on the outside. Jeff Lagerman feels like he can use a bull rush against Glenn Parker and almost knocks him back into Kelly. Jim just does a good job. You know, he just does a nice job of sliding away from trouble and getting the ball down the field. Second and four. Kelly changes the ball. Holmes. First down and more to the Jacksonville 36-yard line. Derek Holmes, 226. Nice changeup from Thomas. 
That big offensive line of the Buffalo Bills just continues to knock people off. Yurkovich takes an outside rush. There's nobody home. Kelly with a quick pass to Reed. Andre Reed wrapped up by Beasley. Still gets to the 25-yard line. You know, Mike, one thing I'm noticing, Jacksonville defensively, a lot of their players are slipping and not feeling real comfortable with their footing. And if that happens, they're not going to be able to wrap up and make good tackles. The Buffalo guys are used to playing on this, and they're making all kinds of moves. First and ten Bills on another good drive. Holmes racked up by the rookie Kevin Hardy out of Illinois, the number one draft choice. The game of the line will be second and nine of the 24. Hardy with brilliant speed. He said when he got first got in the league, just running around on instinct. 12, 13 first downs make it for the Bills so far. Only two for Jacksonville. Kelly under pressure, throws short, complete. Lonnie Johnson inside the 20. Coming up at 4 o'clock, the NFC Wild Card from Texas Stadium in Dallas. The defending Super Bowl champion Cowboys will host the Minnesota Vikings. Please join Al Frank and Dan for all the action. That starts at 4 o'clock Eastern. And we've got another injury. And it's the veteran Clyde Simmons who is down. The defense has been on the field a lot. They're not used to running at this pace. I, I think very few people would be defensively. They're not able to substitute and get a lot of people in to take some of the pressure off. And therefore, you just keep chasing and running and chasing and running. That defense really sucking for oxygen right now. Back in a moment. Number one, and you've got the Wendy's Three Tour Challenge Sunday on ABC. Veteran Clyde Simmons goes to the bench. If you join this late, he has made the play of the game for the Jacksonville Jaguars with his team down already 7 0. Watch Simmons with the interception, a little shovel pass from Kelly, had his eye on it all the way, and still has some style in that run. And gets the touchdown for Jacksonville. That tied it at seven. Brackens is in for Simmons at that right defensive end spot. Simmons said all these young guys have to know is the only thing that matters is you get to the playoffs. They're there and they're trying to do something with it. The Bills with another outstanding drive. This will be the tenth play. Third and two. Holmes, the running back, nowhere to go. Dives forward to the 15 on second effort. May have gotten the first down. You know, Mike, in the course of a football game, a run like that may not seem like an important play, but it really is because it keeps a drive going in the red area. You look for interceptions, touchdown passes, things like that. This was a big play in this football game for the Buffalo Bills if he makes the first down. They did not give him a great mark. It's about a half yard shy of the 15. Watch this. This is all individual effort. There he breaks one tackle. Hardy's got a shot at him, but he keeps on spinning and driving to almost get the first down. And it's a half yard shot. They have to reach the yard mark itself for the first down. The crowd yells, go. No sign of the kicking team. This is a decision that's made on the field by Jim Kelly. Marv has been with him a long time. He knows what Jim wants to do and can do. They figure their best bet is to try and get the opportunity to put seven on the board. What do you like here as a play? I think you give the ball to Thurman, or the floor, I'm sorry, to uh, Derek Holmes. I still think you can run the football. I still think you can run the football somewhere inside the tackles. Three wide receivers, they spread them out. Holmes the only setback. Now he goes in motion. Kelly with the quarterback keep. And it's close. Now you saw the measurement the last time. He's almost got to get to the line. I mean, the chains take it almost to the 15-yard line. Kelly doesn't get to the line. As a matter of fact, he gets knocked back a little bit. Still fighting and doesn't quite get to the 15-yard line. And Kelly comes out gimpy. 
course he missed three starts with a very bad hamstring and I don't think they have it they needed to make the line I think they're going to be just about three inches short they're short Buffalo signaling first down, but it's first down Jacksonville. They are short by a credit card. A big play and a big defensive stand by the Jaguars with 6.48 to go in the half. Marv Levy went for it on fourth and a foot. Tom Coughlin's defense stopped it on your least favorite play in the playbook. I like going for it on fourth. I don't like the call on the quarterback sneak here. Jim Kelly, you know, it's good. You're going to get submarine right there. It's going to be submarine. Now, Kelly, get, there's no movement. Okay, he's got nowhere to go. None whatsoever. Now, he doesn't make the first down. He's still fighting. But then all of a sudden, Lagerman's on top of him. And those are his feet. And folks, I got to tell you, feet aren't supposed to be pointed that way. Tom Coughlin hoping, praying, and got the first down for his club. That is the biggest play of the game so far. Jacksonville starts outside its own 15. Natron means Maston his blocking back. Means off the right side to about the 18-yard line. And some pushing and shoving after the play. Kelly trying to walk off that knee. Got both of them falling on by Lagerman. I mean, you know, he, he's got he's got two bad knees. The field is wet, and he tries to sneak it. Clock running, 619 and counting. First half. Jaguars with the ball. They're down by four. Brunel to Maston. And Maston has it at the 26-yard line. That should be enough for a first down. Mike Maston had six catches during the year. But that time you saw what Brunel's mobility does to Bruce Smith. Bruce has got a clear shot at him coming hard, but he just has to hesitate for a second. Bruce Smith is going to come in. All right, around Baselli. Now he's got a shot at him. I can't quite commit. See how he's just got to hesitate for a second. Allows Brunel to get it off. Bill show blitz and come with it and means lowers his head and is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Bruce Smith in on the tackle. Chris Spielman was in also. You know, one thing Spielman said about Bruce Smith, and it's interesting to listen to his perspective. He said that he has watched Barry Sanders for many years in Detroit, thinks he's a phenomenal person. He said watching Bruce Smith now is like watching Barry Sanders. They're both in a league by themselves. Because of the impact they can have on a game. Second and nine. Blitz Brunel from the blind side. White hit him. David White out of Nebraska with a blind side sack on Mark Brunel. I'll tell you, Mike, he may be out of Nebraska, but he came out of nowhere that time. He's going to come clean off number 51. He's coming clean. They bring four from the side. Spielman gets blocked. He doesn't. Great job by Mark Brunel hanging on to the ball, but David White just leveled it. White, the backup to Bryce Pop. He played a lot when he was injured. Third and 14. Another blitz. Brunel throws to Mitchell. And the big tight end rumbling over midfield to a Buffalo 40, breaking more tackles to the 30. Pete Mitchell, who has great hands, showed tremendous ability after the catch, a gain of 47. What happens is Jacksonville now spreads the field, and they're going to work the middle. The tight end's going to come off right down the middle. There he is, wide open. Just throwing people away. First and 10, Jacksonville at the 30. Means. Smith stuffed him, he got away. Natron Means. Touchdown. Holy cow, what a run. We are seeing some okay. unbelievable individual Boy, efforts by guys. Touchdown. Means stopped dead at the line and just doesn't quit. 
Back-to-back -back plays by guys who refuse to go down. Mitchell and then Means. Natron Means now nine carries, 98 yards in the first half, and this crowd is stunned. And, Mike, the Buffalo Bills just got a wake-up call. They are in this football game now. They know they've got one on their hands. Nine rushes, 98 yards so far for Natron Means with three minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first half. And individual plays inspire more individual plays. Hollis for the point after. And the expansion underdog Jaguars have taken the lead on the Buffalo Bills 17 to 14. Natron Means is the kind of guy you can't throw a body into. You've got to wrap him up as he starts out to the right. The Bills never really get a hand on him. I mean, there he is. Bruce never gets him wrapped up. He goes outside of Hanson. Now he turns just some pure speed on. Stevens tries to catch him and knock the ball out, but he can't. He's just really a pinball right now. Bounces off of Bruce. Bounces off of Spielman. Now he turns the corner, sees the goal line. Nothing's going to stop him. This is just great individual effort. He's going to get there. At his 240 pounds of running back, going just as hard as he possibly can. We said the crowd was stunned. What do you think the Bills' reaction is right now? I, well, like I said, Mike, they realize that they're in a football game. I mean, this thing's going to be coming up on halftime, and we heard about the halftime speech that Bruce Smith gave last week in the Kansas City game. I think he's got to go to the next one for his ball club getting ready for the rest of this game. Page two. Molds and Copeland are deep for the kick. The ball fell off the tee for Hollis. Got to take your hat off to Jacksonville for the way they have responded. They could have mailed the rest of this one in after the way things went in the first quarter. You know, Mike, you don't get into this tournament mailing anything in. I think that's what differentiates the guys that are in the playoffs and the guys that aren't. There's no quit in it. It's a, it's a long football game. you got to keep trying to make plays. They have been the miracle team of 1996. Molds at the one. Has a seam. Molds to midfield in the Jacksonville territory. Huge return for Molds. Barlow knocked him out of bounds. Let's go to Mark Malone. Thanks, Mike. A great battle brewing right now between Bruce Smith and Tony Baselli. Of course, Baselli said confidently but respectfully, if I hold my technique, I can take care of Smith. And so far, he's been able to do that. Take a look at the pass throw. Smith out wide. Watch Baselli's feet. Hangs in there, gets the hand shot out. There's a great job against Smith. In tight against the run. It's a battle. Smith is getting frustrated. Baselli doing a good job. A wider look. Watch how he blows Smith off the ball and stays with the block. That springs Natron Means for a 62-yard gain. It has been all Pizzelli so far, Mike. All right, Mark, he's done a brilliant job. Thurman Thomas back in there on first and ten. Kelly with all day to throw, floats it. Flag is down. The ball's fumbled by Tasker after he makes the catch. We'll check the penalty. Robert Massey on the coverage. They're going to call holding against the Jaguars. Jim Kelly, Mike, had a lot of time to throw again that time. That offensive Forever. line of the Bills doing a good job. What Marv is saying is that he caught the ball. That's the point that he's trying to make. So we don't want the five-yard holding penalty. We'll take the play. Holding defense number 40. That penalty's declined. We have a catch with a fumble out of bounds forward. The ball is spot back to the spot of the fumble. First down. Let's go to Mark Malone. Mark? All right, Mike, just real quickly now, the numbers on Smith and Bozzelli. They've gone head-to-head, -head, 18 of 21 plays. They've run behind Bozzelli four times for 68 yards. Smith just two tackles. He hasn't got a really a snip of the quarterback. Mike? Boy, you'll take that performance from the second-year left tackle against the all-world Bruce Smith. 
First down, Bills. They have had no trouble moving the ball. They have it at the Jacksonville 22. Thurman. Hasn't been much room since his first two carries of the ball game. I still feel like they got to pound him. I don't think running Thurman here and running Thurman there is going to be effective for the Bills. I think you got to get him involved in the flow and the rhythm like Jim is in the passing game. Second and six. Clock running, 2.49 to go. Jim Schaffner, the quarterback coach for the Bills. Kelly with plenty of time. Now under pressure and sacked by Simmons. The second big play by Clyde Simmons. Number nine active on the all-time sack list for regular season sacks, and he came through to get Kelly that time. That time what he does, Mike, is he takes John Fiena, number 70, and just goes inside of him. He starts outside and comes up inside. Of course, Jim Kelly, not the most mobile of quarterbacks. Nowhere for Jim to go. He can't step up in the pocket. Third and 16. Draw play. Thurman Thomas. Room to run. Still on his feet. Had to get near the 13-yard line for a first down. Stopped at the 15. A And the field goal unit came on, now going back off as we have reached the two-minute warning in Buffalo. Jaguars by three. This is Chris Berman. Stay with us at halftime. Boomer Esiason and I will analyze the first half and what's become a wild ball game. We'll get a preview of our second game, Minnesota at Dallas. But let's kick it back to Orchard Park, New York. And Michael, a little wilder than we all thought, huh? Chris, it's been a lot of fun so far, and we'll look forward to the Boomer and Boomer show with two minutes to go here in the uh, first half from Buffalo. This will be a 33-yard field goal attempt for Steve Christie. And just got it inside that right upright. So the Bills make another good drive playoff and have tied it at 17. Christie's just going to hook this thing inside the left upright. And it's just starting out there, and there it is. Just came inside. The Your ABC primetime lineup for tomorrow night starts with America's Funniest Home Videos at 7 Eastern, then at a special time, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Al Pacino and Chris O'Donnell star in Scent of a Woman on the ABC Sunday Night Movie of the Week. I never realized how much Al Pacino and Pat Riley looked like one another until I saw it. <laughs> Eighty thousand capacity here at Rich Stadium. They approximate the crowd at uh, just under seventy. Really surprising. Last week was not a sellout against Kansas City. This game blacked out in Buffalo and not a sellout here. I, th I thought with the blackout, we uh, there'd be a lot more people driving up, but uh, evidently they drove to a radius where they might have a chance to watch it from. I tell you, they're missing a good one if they're not here, aren't they ever? Christie to kick to Bucky Brooks, who averages almost 25 yards of return. Low line drive skipper picked up by Bell. And Ricky Bell hustles it out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Jacksonville will start from there with a minute 50 to go in the half. Mike, I don't think that Jacksonville can just sit on the lead and just say, boy, we're really glad we're here. I think they have to go out and try and get some points. And this is the adjustment they have made in this game. The first three drives, they were just throttled by Buffalo's defense. The last three drives, they pile up 163 yards. And they've moved the ball both throwing it as well as running it. Kevin Gilbride is now starting to get the balance in the offense that he really likes to work with. A very innovative offensive coordinator. Jacksonville had to use one of its timeouts earlier. They still have two. Out of the shotgun, Means. Natron Means running hard down to the Buffalo 30, or out to his own 43-yard line where Damian Covington made the tackle. 
Sam Rogers is the injured Bill. And Buffalo uses a timeout. Covington is also down. Keenan McCardell takes a shot at the knee. Now he's blocking on a run so he can get on down there. So two Buffalo linebackers hurt on the same play. That's Rodgers. And Means a little gimpy as well. Look at the thighs on a guy. Natron means over 100 yards. The Bills only averaging 3.3 a rush in this game. But Mike, that's been a, that's been the choice of Bill, of Jim Kelly to, to want to throw the football more than run it. He's picked his spots to try and run it. Mostly draws a little bit on first and ten. But Kelly wants to put the ball in the air. Gilbride on the other side says, "I've got to try and establish a running game, or I'm going to get my quarterback killed." And Natron means has given him that. Brunel so far only five out of 12 for 78 yards and an interception but he's hit three of his last four for 67 most of that courtesy of Pete Mitchell with a great catch and run 136 to go in the hill second and four Jacksonville Brunel to Smith over the middle and Smith down to the Buffalo 44 yard line. You can really see it. Jacksonville much more comfortable on offense. And you can see Mark Brunel throwing the ball with a lot more confidence as well. And Bruce Smith getting frustrated by the play of the seller. They'll whistle this play dead. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 72, five-yard penalty, still first down. Leon Searcy, the right tackle, a former Steeler pro bowler. And they think they have great bookend tackles for a long time with Searcy and Basella. James Stewart, number 33, is the running back. He goes to the win. First and 15. Brunel chased by Hanson he slides at the 43 and Brunel wants Jacksonville second timeout Tony Baselli is just doing an excellent job with Bruce Smith whether Bruce wants to go hard inside he can take him here he's lined up out in space tries to come up the field to create the angle Baselli just stones him he locks up on him gets the hands inside and allows Brunel a chance to escape out of the pocket. Tony Baselli has given up one sack all year long. Let's get in an early vote for next year's <laughs> This guy is going. And it won't be, and it'll be the first of many when he yes, does. Yes, sir. Tremendous talent out of Southern Cal. 17-17 with a minute six to go in the half. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime Report, Chris Berman, Boomer Esiason. First half highlights. Nice to have Boomer with us in a preview of the NFC Wild Card game. Minnesota against the defending Super Bowl champion Cowboys. Al Frank and Dan will have that game for you from Arlington, Texas. Second and ten, Brunel throws. Mitchell with a catch. Stops short of the first down at the Buffalo 36. Marlo Perry with a solid tackle. Mike, Buffalo on defense is playing what's called a two-deep zone. They're putting the corners up close on the receivers. Got the safeties in the middle. The place to work for Jacksonville will be the middle of the football field. Third and two. Flag is down. And Brunel stops short of the first down. This looks like it was a holding call. And coming up limping, Dave Widell is center. It's going to be called on Baselli. This will be interesting to see the replay on this one. As Bruce Smith tried to take him inside, did not look like a hold. And I think it's also very critical 
for the Buffalo Bills to refuse this penalty, take the downs, and don't give Jacksonville an opportunity for another play. 71, 10-yard penalty, previous spot, third down. Straight back to throw. Dumps it off to Stewart on the screen. Stewart only gets back to the 40-yard line. You know, in a way, Mike, I, I don't quite understand why Buffalo didn't just take it on fourth and four and not give Jacksonville an opportunity to go out and try and complete the first down. I mean, to me, you want to you don't want to give them another opportunity to go out there and make a play. I agree with you completely. I don't know why they did it. That's the second time in penalty discussions that I don't think they've necessarily done exactly what the coaches wanted. Letting the clock run down, it's at three, and they'll stop it. Jacksonville uses its last time out. And now really any kind of a play, they can kill the first half. Remember we talked about the wind? Well, I got to tell you, Mike Hollis is going to have a pretty good breeze coming off his right shoulder to try and knock one in from a long way out. This will be a 57 or 58-yard field goal. His long for the year is 52, but back in the preseason, Hollis hit a 59-yard field goal. And keep in mind, Mike, there hasn't been a field goal over 50 yards in 48 total games here in December and January. That goes all the way back to the 60s. It is a 58-yard try for Hollis. Just short and wide right. Mike, that record's going to stay intact now. Bruce Smith and his Bills teammate, as Joe said earlier, got a wake-up call when Jacksonville took the lead. But now we're at the end of the first half with the score of the Bills 17, the Jaguars 17. Chris Berman and Bill Marcias and next with a Toyota Halftime Report after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC station. Always come through. Now from our New York studio, Chris Berman. Hello once again, everybody. 17 all at halftime. Pair of boomers, uh, me and uh, Boomer Esiason once led the Bengals to the Super Bowl in the uh, Super Bowl 23. Well, the Jacksonville Jaguars have weathered the storm. Look there, bad for it's them. one of the things that we talked about early on. What they had to do is they had to, you know, say, hey, wait a minute. Let's see what happens here. And Buffalo threw everything at Mark Brunel. They threw mm -hmm. safety blitzes, linebacker blitzes. They were coming from all over the, all over the place. And I'm, I'm very impressed with the way the kid is handling it. He's, he's standing strong in the pocket, and he's delivering the ball very well now. Well, the Jaguars and Brunel showing the maturity of, well, the Buffalo Bills. Let's go from a rich stadium in Orchard Park, New York. First series, the Jaguars got the kick. And a holding penalty put them inside their own 10. And Jim Jeffcoat, he and Methuselah tied for most years in the NFL. Almost gets a safety here. It's intentional grinding from the one-foot line. So it was a punt deep. The Bills went up top early. Then the screen, the flare to Thurman. Thomas touchdown, seven yards, seven nothing Buffalo. But then the shovel pass gets Jacksonville back in. What happened here? What you try to do here, Chris, is you try to run a shovel pass underneath a high rushing end. This time Clyde Simmons stays at home. Jim Kelly makes a, an unbelievable mistake in throwing the ball right to Clyde Simmons, who's had a great first half, including a sack. So that makes it 7 all now with the Bills leading 14 to 10. Fourth and one from the 16. Gamble doesn't work. The Jacksonville defense stops Jim Kelly on the sneak. 
and then right away Mark Brunel to Pete Mitchell. And this is a big play for the Jacksonville offense because they actually hit the play against the blitz. They brought all their linebackers. Mark Brunel picked up the blitz, hit his hot receiver, and it brought it down to the uh, Buffalo 30-yard line. And that sets up Natron means business. Bounced inside, bounced outside, showing the Pro Bowl form he had with the Bolts a couple of years ago. Touchdown, and it gave Jacksonville the lead. Steve Christie's field goals tied it. Hollis missed the field goal at the end of the half, and we are tied at 17-all. And the tie turned on that Mitchell play, didn't it? Well, it really did for the Jacksonville pass offense, but the one thing that we talked about early on was how important Natron Means was going to be to mm -hmm. this offense to take the pressure off the young quarterback, and Natron is, is delivered. And really, who else is delivered is Tony Baselli. He's done a good job against Bruce Smith. The Buffalo Bills, why would they, with everything going at 7 nothing, throw a shovel pass like that? It's a trick play. What it, do they it's need It's not it for? a trick play. To a fan like you, it might be a trick play, but it is really a legitimate play. It's a combination screen and draw. And what you try to do is, is to run it against a high rushing end. Like I said before, Clyde Simmons is the guy that usually does rush high, and they've probably seen that on film. And really what has happened now, he read Jim Kelly's eyes and made the play. So the Jacksonville Jaguars giving the Bills all they can handle. Thurman Thomas, though, with two touchdowns today, now becomes the all-time postseason leader in career TDs. He has 20. Emmett Smith will see him in our second game as 18. By the way, eight straight games. Thurman has a postseason touchdown that ties John Stallworth's records of eight. Speaking of Emmett and the Cowboys, we'll have a preview from Big D. Cowboys Vikes pre at the half 17 17 as Mark Brunel warms up for the second half. He has his Jaguars in a tie with the favorite and homestanding Buffalo Bills. Halftime stats, look at the rushing yards for Jacksonville, 109 yards after they were stuffed early and averaging 9.9 .9 yards a carry against the Buffalo defense that led the league with a 3.4 average during the regular season. Jacksonville has done the job. Moles from the 12. And Moles takes it out to the 38-yard line. Darren Studd still makes the tackle. There is a marker down. It's going to be offsides against the Jacksonville Jaguars on the kicking team. But offsides, kicking team, number 30. Penalties decline. First down. Natron means the key to the ground game in the first half for Jacksonville. They had four or five big plays, and this, a 62-yard scamper by Means, who showed power, cutting ability, and speed, gained 62 yards, came back, had the big touchdown run later. Kelly to throw on first down, Lonnie Johnson in the flat, and horse collared by Kevin Hardy. And Hardy doing a little woofing after the play. Well, Lonnie Johnson handed him the football. I mean, it's a woof woof. Not just a woof, <laughs> but a woof woof on that one. Hardy says, hey, I may be a rookie, but I'm in this game long enough to know I don't want to be taking the ball stuffed in my face. Second and four. Thomas, who has not had much running room, gets a little here and will be close to a first down. Out across his own 48, Don Davey made the tackle. Threatening skies overhead in Buffalo. A lot of weather appears to be moving in after we started the day at 48 degrees. A delightful late December day. The skies have been getting much more cloudy. Here comes a reverse. Tasker. What a tough little run. Steve Tasker just continues to amaze everybody with his ability. John Yurkovich almost made the penetration enough to make a play deep in the backfield. We saw him fake a couple of reverses in the first half. Now he's going to come from up top the screen. Fake to Thurman. There he is. Yurkovich almost gets a hand on him. Slows him down enough and allows Eddie Robinson to come over and make the play. Tasker gains nine, second and one. Thomas. Off the right side. And he's close as Kevin Hardy made the tackle. Buffalo had all the momentum at the beginning of this game. It was taken away by Jacksonville. And now Buffalo trying to reestablish some dominance here at the start of the third quarter. Mike, I get the sense now in this game that Marv Levy's offense is still in its rhythm and pace. But it looks to me like Jacksonville has caught up with it defensively. Now they're somewhat playing on an even keel.
just short. Remember the last time they were in this situation they went for it on fourth down. Kelly tried a quarterback sneak and did not make it. He won't. I, I'm going to make a little prediction here. He will not try a quarterback sneak this time. I think they go with a power backfield and they pick it up if they can with one of the running backs. Tom Coughlin hoping the dream continues for Jacksonville as they close so strongly and made the playoffs. Yeah, but you know something, Mike? Don't put it past Jim Kelly either to run a little play action, too. Will be third and in inches. Tyndale is the up man in the eye. Thurman Thomas, the tailback. Everybody but Kelly moved early. Looks like they're going to call a false start on the Buffalo Bills here. Jim trying to go with the hard count to pull Jacksonville off didn't work. Well, if he pulled them off sides, he pulled everybody off. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, left guard, five-yard penalty, third down. It's Reuben Brown, the second-year man. Reuben Brown, number 79, is just going to raise up a little bit. He's the left guard, just ever so slight. There he is, that little movement up. That gets everybody flowing. So now instead of third and inches it's third and six from the Jacksonville 46 inside handoff to Thurman Thomas and Thurman with a great hard run got away from Brackens that's what it is Mike it's just great individual efforts by the running backs we've seen today that have been the difference in this game The Jaguars do a good job of stretching this out. Lagerman just strings them out and strings them out, looking for help. Eddie Robbins misses him. Brackens winds up making the play. And Thurman came up limping. Holmes checks in the lineup. Holmes. Hardy swings him down at the 35-yard line. Mike, when Dick Geron, the defensive coordinator of the Jacksonville Jaguars, put this defense together, he wanted to keep it, keep it simple enough so that people like Brackens and Hardy were able to use their athletic ability to make plays. That's what we've seen in this game for them. Second and six for Buffalo. Kelly with a lot of time. Dumps it to Holmes. Nice move by Holmes to get extra yards inside the 25. Eddie Robinson had to make the tackle. Well, you talk about a quarterback focusing downfield. Everything was collapsing on Jim Kelly on that play, but he just stands in there like a statue. Right in the middle of the pocket. Watch from the right side. Getting pushed back. Fina's getting pushed back. All of a sudden, you see an arm raise up and the ball come out. Another first down for the Bills. They have dominated in that category. Kelly signaling for receivers to move one way or another and then just throws it away. One of the few times he hasn't been able to find an open receiver, and he's hot with somebody. Second and ten. Taylor, he can't be hot at the offensive. Oh, no, he's got to be thrilled. He ought to take them out to dinner tonight. I have a feeling he took them out the other night. <laughs> That's why they're doing such a good job. It will be second and ten for Buffalo. Marv Levy, 71 years young. The owner, Ralph Wilson, says he can coach as long as he wants. Here comes the blitz. They don't get there. And a very dangerous pass completed to Tasker. Washington made the tackle. One more step. He's got a shot at an interception. We pointed out earlier, Mike, it's so essential for Jim Kelly to have the ability to step up. And it's very important that the middle of this offensive line draws a line. Derek Holmes, number 44, has got to be considered one of the blockers. He does a good job on Kevin Hardy. Third and five for Buffalo. Bad snap, and Kelly just dives on it back at the 30. Well, Lagerman's got to be real careful now. You just made a big play. Jim Kelly's a fiery kind of guy. He doesn't want Lagerman jumping on him like he did. 
but he can't afford a penalty or he'd hurt Jacksonville. Jim Kelly comes up mad at him. Remember, Lagerman played for the Jets, and he's been in this in 10 of these games, and he's going to go after Kelly. Ken Hall never, ever gets the ball up. Kelly does the smart thing. Lagerman just comes in and buries him. Kelly doesn't like it. Well, Lagerman could have hit him a lot harder. Now it will be a 47-yard field goal try for Christie, who's long in the regular season is 48. And he got all of that one. Steve Christie with a field goal to put Buffalo back on top of Jacksonville. ABC Sports coverage of the AFC wildcard is brought to you by Miller Lite when you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite. Life is good. AT&T, your true choice. And by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealers. Got a great game coming to you from Buffalo. Third quarter, 20 to 17 Bills. Steve Christie to kick off for Buffalo. Brooks and Bell are deep to receive for Jacksonville. Christie blasts one. And the Jaguars will start from their own 20 yard line, down 20 to 17. More of the AFC wildcard game from Buffalo after this. Last season, Buffalo stampeded over, around, and through Miami on their way to a 37-22 route. The Bills racked up 341 yards, an AFC playoff record. Three different runners scored as Buffalo ran away from their rivals and into the NFL record book. It's a prudential fact this afternoon. Concerns the oldest playoff coaches in the history of not just the NFL, but everywhere. And Marv Levy now holds the title at age 71. Breaking Casey Stengel's record with the 1960 Yankees. The others, King Clancy in hockey, George Hallett with the Bears, and Connie Mack with the Athletics. Connie Mack actually coached until he was 88, but he never made the postseason again, and he owned the team. Brunel chased out of the pocket. Throws to Mees, and just as well that it was incomplete. And actually, Natron Means, seeing who was ahead of him, did a good job. Didn't really make an effort to try and make that catch. Just sort of steered it out of bounds. Brunel led all quarterbacks in rushing. Led all quarterbacks in passing. That hadn't been done since Johnny Unitas did it in 1963. He's had a brilliant year. Natron Means, room to run on the right side out to the 30-yard line. Natron Means, not only has he run hard, but he's gotten some help. He's gotten some excellent blocks. And a lot of those moves have been the right side. We've seen Tony, Tony Baselli working on Bruce Smith, but Leon Searcy and Rich Tilski on the right side have done a good job. Watch this right side fire out. He's going to allow Means to go outside. Do a nice job of standing up Hanson. Searcy cleans out the outside, and Means follows him. And Natron Means comes up limping badly after the play. He'll be replaced by James Stewart. See, had both of his ankles clamped together. It's a first down, Jacksonville. And Stewart will get a carry and greeted by Bruce Smith. Hello. Means working on that right ankle. They're retaping it. What a brilliant afternoon he's had. Had 110 yards a week ago to help Jacksonville get into the playoffs. That was his season's high. He's eclipsed that here in the first round of the playoffs. And they've got to have him on the field to have a chance to win. Brunel on second and ten tries to take off and has to slide at the 35. Picks up five yards. We told Brunel a couple of weeks ago, if you start sliding instead of taking all those big hits, we'll say you're smart, so we will. That was a smart play. Tony Baselli 
going to take Bruce Smith down this time. Smith wants to go. Baselli just stays with him. Runs him all the way to the other side of the formation. Mark doesn't like what he sees. He figures he can get a quick five. Third and five for the Jaguars. Smith lined up over center. Thrown away by Brunel, no flag. Well, that time, Mike, he got out of the pocket, and the ball got at to or near the line of scrimmage, and that's the key when it comes to intentional grounding. He managed to avoid the sack, get out of the pocket, and get the ball off. Pressure he, by Jeffcoat, who's had some special plays on defense for Buffalo. Jim Jeffcoat plays about a dozen to 15 every game, and he gives you everything he has. One of the premier defensive pass rushers in the game. Barker has kicked the Dickens out of it. Jeff Burris waits back at his 23-yard line. Another beautiful punt. Burris driven back to the 16. And knocked out of bounds short of the 25 by Randy Jordan. A return of seven after another pretty punt of 49 yards. Seven forty-six to go, third quarter. Buffalo by three. Hope you'll be with us on ABC Sports tomorrow afternoon, two p.m. Eastern. The Wendy's Three Tour Challenge. This unique event features three three-member teams from the PGA, LPGA, and Senior PGA Tour. Kelly under pressure gets away, gets away again, and throws to Thomas incomplete. Kelly's done a nice job moving around in the pocket to buy himself some time when he has gotten some pressure. And Tom McManus, number 55, has had a couple of shots at Kelly, just hasn't been able to wrap him up. And Tony Brackens just continues to put pressure from the inside. Here he is against Brown. Kelly tries to flush. Brackens is right there. Second and ten for the Bills. They're up by three, third quarter. Thomas trying to take it outside and will pick up only a couple across the 25. McManus and Robinson on the tackle. You know, Mike, in this entire football game, we've only seen one team try and go down the field once. That was Jackson go on the interception by Thomas Smith. Jim Kelly has really not tried to challenge this Jaguar defense and just air one out down the field. Third and eight for Kelly. A lot of time to throw. Deep out this time, nearly intercepted. Knocked away by Aaron Beasley. I, I think you, I really think you have to do that. And, and he's lucky it wasn't picked off. But you have to get a defense respecting the deep ball. That way you can throw underneath. If you keep throwing underneath, they just keep creeping up closer and closer and closer. Chris Moore to punt to Hudson only the second time in the game that the Bills have gone three and out. floater toward the sideline and it will go out of bounds we've got a timeout with 658 to go third quarter a three-point game Wayne Weaver the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars who has seen his club get into the playoffs in only their second year in the National Football League and here are the five fastest. Jacksonville and Carolina lead the list. Cincinnati made it in his second year. They lost. Tampa Bay got in, or Tampa, Cincinnati in its third year. Tampa Bay, the only one who won in its first appearance in the playoffs. Jacksonville trailing here by three. Means is back in the ballgame, and he'll get the carry. Natron means across the 35 to the 36. He has had a huge day and they have retaped that right ankle. Mike, the one thing I don't think people appreciate about Natron means is the good quick feet he has. He doesn't leave his feet laying in a hole. When he hits a hole, those feet of his are up and around and he can change direction very well for a guy that's pulling 240 pounds. He was a pro bowler in San Diego in 94, rushed for over 1,300 yards. Buffalo showing blitz. And they come with it. Brunel gets rid of it in a hurry, and Smith can't hold it. Mm -hmm. 
You know, you have to keep you have to keep a body on Bruce Smith, Mike. You, if, if you think he's going inside, you can't turn him over. Watch this. Coleman's on the inside. Baselli's on the outside. They let Bruce, Bruce basically run up the middle. You got to keep a body between him and your quarterback. Third and six. The crowd on its feet here in Buffalo. Brunel sidearms one, and Mitchell with the great hands makes the juggling catch. Oh, my goodness. What an unbelievable catch by Mitchell. But again, Tony Baselli, one-on-one -on -one with Bruce Smith. Nobody to help him. It's an open end. He's got to keep those feet moving. Does a terrific job of running him around the cup. And what a catch by Mitchell. This is great coverage. I mean... Schultz has got his hands right in there. Mitchell makes an unbelievable grab. Second-year man out of Boston College. Three catches, 64 yards. First down, Jacksonville. Blitz by White. Gets it out in the flat to Maston, and Maston with running room to the Buffalo 43, where he's banged out of bounds by Covington. I think that is the advantage of the shotgun. That time, White was a free runner. That means that there's nobody blocking him. You can release the back in the direction the guy's coming in, and there's nobody there to cover. And you get to see it the whole way. If you're under the center, you can't do that because he's there as fast as you are. Jacksonville has the ball in Buffalo territory. 5-11 to go third quarter. Here comes the blitz. Means cuts it back from the blitzing side and takes it down to the 38-yard line. That's exactly where Kurt Schultz came from. Means circled all the way back around to that side. So did Schultz, and he ended up making the tackle. But that's what I mean by the ability of him to change direction for a big man. Watch his quick little feet. Of course, you know, next to Barry Sanders, these look like they're slow motion, but it's still pretty good. See how he changes and just pops a little bit? Boy, I tell you, it's a nice change of direction. An impressive drive so far for Jacksonville. Brunel in trouble. And throws it away. Nearly waited too long. Chris Spielman putting the pressure on. You know and Spielman what? has had such a brilliant year. He set not only an individual record, but a franchise record for Buffalo with over 200 tackles. And he has given them what they lacked on those Super Bowl teams, a real toughness up the middle. <laughs> Eddie Robinson is riding the bike. Are you kidding? That's what happens when your offense is on the field a long time. He'll be at the Stairmaster next. Got to stay warm. Third and four. Brunel with a quick toss. He's got the first down. McCardell to the 10 yard line. Pass complete to Keenan 27 yard gain in the first catch of the day for Keenan McCardell. That whole play is possible only because of the job the guys up front did. They give Brunel an opportunity to throw through a lane. Coming from his other side, Baselli still working on Smith. Smith tries to go inside. Now Coleman takes it. And then he has a chance to throw the lane. Good job by McCardell at the line, making Irvin move his feet. First and 10, just outside the 10. Means. Picks his way for about three. The fortunes for Jacksonville, Mike, really changed in this game when they were able to run the football a little bit. That's what Kevin Gilbride, the offensive coordinator, looks for when he calls a game plan. He tries real hard to get balance, passing and running, so that you can keep the defense off guard a little bit. Inside the 20, the Bills' defense has been superb. Jacksonville has been able to do very little down here in terms of scoring touchdowns. Brunel, quick set, throws incomplete, and hits Smith and bounced off. Thomas Smith on the coverage. Brunel just sets back and fires this one. 
I'm not certain whether this gets to Jimmy Smith or Thomas Smith gets his arm in. He's got the inside post move. No, that's just a dropped ball. Burnell hit him between the eight and the two. You gotta make plays in the red area. Boy, that baby had some pace on it, too. I mean, his hands never had a chance to get up. Third down and seven. They can make a first down, but it would be right at the goal line. Brunel this time for Smith on the fade incomplete again great coverage by Thomas Smith and they'll have to send on the field goal team well they had their shot Joe on the slant you know Mike it, it's the big thing is you get a chance to make plays in this game you have to we've seen Natron means making plays we've seen Clyde Simmons making plays for the Jaguars that time Jimmy had Jimmy Smith had one right in between the eight and the two and couldn't come in with it Policy has been good from 27 and short on a desperation 58 yarder. We'll try from 24. And we are tied again in Buffalo. The field goal makes it Jacksonville 20, Buffalo 20. Welcome back to Buffalo, where the Bruce Smith and Tony Baselli battle continues to rage. Smith has shown him just about every move he has, but really with no effect on the second-year tackle. Look at this. He lines up wide and works to the inside. Baselli strong and puts him on the ground. The reason, look at his feet. He never gets them crossed up on the spin move, is able to handle Bruce Smith. And, in fact, Smith has even tried the bull rush. 327 pounds. He ain't moving him. He is frustrated, Mike. It's been all Baselli. Look at the numbers. 34 of 43 head-to-head. -head. Baselli has got help six times, only two pressures from Smith. And this is an unbelievable performance by a guy that is the best young tackle in the National Football League, bar none. Mike? Well, you got that right. He has done a tremendous job, Mark. And you can see the frustration on the face of Bruce Smith. He told us last night, if I keep my technique, I've got a chance to do really well. But this guy's the best. You know, now, now he's into a football game. Now it's just... I got it. You know, Bruce can't throw many more moves at him. He's had a chance to see a lot of what Bruce wants to do. Hard inside, quick up the field, in and outs. Oh, he's seen the whole repertoire. High and very, very short. Taken by one of the up men at the 35-yard line. Start your New Year's Day with ABC at 11 a.m. Eastern for the Tournament of Roses Parade. And then at 1 o'clock, it's the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. The Northwestern Wildcats will take on Tennessee and Peyton Manning. Followed at 4.30 by the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Arizona State looking for at least a share of the national championship as they go against Ohio State. Been a magical year for Arizona State. Derek Holmes will be the running back as Buffalo starts from its own 35. Kelly throws in a hurry and was swarmed under by Eddie Robinson. Second and ten. Eddie w working the bike. <laughs> the offense was on the field. I guess he got him psyched up. There's his bike. Obviously, he's not on it because he's on the field now. He'll come flying in right in their middle. They can't pick him up. They're bringing too many people. Ken Hall can only get one. You saw Fina try and come and help out, but way too late. Timed that beautifully. I guess he'll be back on it after this series. Kelly gives to Holmes. Holmes hitting the backfield, slips a tackle, knocked down for a loss. There's also a flag down. And all at once, the Jacksonville defense stepping up big time, applying pressure. That was Tony Brackens, who just fires across the line to disrupt the running play. Now the choice here, you can make it third and 12 or second and 20. Looks like they're refusing it. I like third and 12. Holding, Holding offense, offense, number 84. Penalties decline, third down. That's an, you know, big ones. Third and sometimes you think about taking the big ones. Make it second down and 20, but you got to figure they might be able to pick up and, and get to make it third and six, third and seven. I like this decision. Third down and 12, the defense is rolling, don't stop it. Jacksonville jumps offside. This will be a free play for Kelly. And it's complete to Quinn Early. He has given Robert Massey fits. 
All right, Jim Kelly just doing a good job of working the count. That time hangs in the pocket, as he always does. Gets the one-on-one -on -one he looks for and puts it right where he has to. So maybe they should have made it second and 20. Offside defense, number 96. Penalties declined. First down. I don't think you can do that. <laughs> Simmons wasn't the first one to jump, but he was the one who got caught. Here comes another blitz. And Holmes is hammered by Kevin Hardy. You know what they're doing, Mike? They're bringing linebackers up the middle of the football field, and they're doing it for two reasons. Number one, if if Kelly goes back and throws, then you got a shot at him. If they're going to try and run the play, Thurman Thomas or Derek Holmes is so deep. Watch this. Here he comes right there, right through the middle, right in the hole. The offensive line doesn't have time to react. Draw play now to Holmes. Tries to spin it outside, cuts back and dives to the Jacksonville 47-yard line. First down marker is at the 41, so it will be third and six. Don Davey chased down the play along with Hardy. You know, it's not like Jacksonville's defenders haven't had good, clean shots. No, they have. I think both Derek Holmes and Thurman Thomas have both done a good job of picking up extra yards after they've been trapped. Another third down for Kelly. Pressure throws into the flat, knocked away by Washington. Knocked it out of the hands of Quinn Early. Mickey Washington knows these Buffalo Bills. Played with them, played against them. Up top, Washington in close one-on-one -on -one coverage. Early turns inside. He, yeah, you know, got away with a little grass. It's incidental contact. The Bills will have to punt it away. Sky high, and Hudson signals fair catch and makes it inside the 20. A punt of only 30, but no return, so we're down to 57 seconds to go in the third quarter, and Kelly will talk to Schaffner and Marv Levy. And you know what, what Jim is doing right now when he's talking to um, Schaffner is he's, he's trying to say, all right, look, it's the protection. It's not what he's doing with the football. The guys have to close it down inside and give me a chance to step up. And they have to do the same thing so that our running game has a place to go. You can feel momentum hanging in the balance right now. Yet you, you get the idea the next team with a good drive is going to capture that momentum. Jacksonville had a good one the last time they had their hands on the ball. They'll start from their own 18-yard line when Natron Means is the single setback. means we'll get the carry nothing there this time and he is buried in a wave of blue jerseys Chris Spielman led the charge Spielman said he came here yeah for the money but more than that he came here for the opportunity to win a championship it's the heart of that Lions defense it was unbelievable that they let him get out of Detroit second and ten Brunel short set and completes it to his tight end Derek Brown Covington makes the stop and the Jaguars will not have to run another play that's the end of the third quarter with the score the Bills 20 and the Jaguars 20 we'll be back after this from our AB Station. We start the fourth quarter in Buffalo with a big play for Jacksonville. Third and two in its own 26 yard line. The crowd yelling defense on its feet. Brunel dumps it over the middle. The catch is made. A first down to Smith. Great running after the catch to break a tackle, a gain of 13. Oh, and Chris Spielman had him. He, he had him a yard short. And Jimmy Smith, a strong runner. I mean, he's 6'1", he's 205 pounds, manages to break the tackle. Smith just slides inside. Good protection. Spielman comes up to try and make the hit. And Smith showing some of that strength. 
Boy, that happens about once a year when Spielman misses an open shot at a guy. Here comes another blitz. They throw it to Maston in the flat, and it's picked off by Smith. Smith with a chance to go, and he will. Touchdown, Bill. David White, the blitzing linebacker, just tipped that thing in the air. And it hung up long enough so that Thomas Smith had the shot at it and takes it in for the go-ahead score. 39 yards on the return. Boy, Tom Coughlin has got his football team moving the ball, making plays, and then all of a sudden, an individual effort by David White just tipping the ball in the air allows Thomas Smith to run it in. The point after makes it a seven-point game. Brunel with his second interception, but that one's certainly not his fault. David White right here is going to come in, tip the ball in the air. Thomas Smith's going to be able to make the interception. Again, free runner. He just doesn't get it up. Just hangs in the air. That's Burris, excuse Check me. Check it, it's Burris. Yes. Sorry, Jeff. Didn't mean to give that credit to Thomas. Just a little tip allows it to hang in the air. That's the play that was so successful earlier in this half. This time, however, with the tip. We tried to emphasize how important the turnovers are in the playoff. Jacksonville commits its second. Both interceptions. Buffalo has turned it over only once. Road teams have lost 35 games in turning the ball over more than the home team. 35 in a row. It would lead you to believe the Jacksonville defense will need a turnover. Well, and that's why Jacksonville was able to run the table uh, in December to get themselves into the playoffs because they didn't make mistakes. Brunel did not throw an interception from November 24th until the end of the regular season. He has thrown two today. Bucky Brooks deep to receive. Brooks has to race up to get it near the 20. And plows up to the 35-yard line. Coming up at 4 o'clock, the NFC Wild Card from Texas Stadium in Dallas. The defending Super Bowl champion Cowboys will host the Minnesota Vikings. Al Frank and Dan standing by for that one. Starting at 4 o'clock Eastern. Well, Mike Jacksonville on offense has really not been shut down this second half by Buffalo. So other than putting the ball in the wrong people's hands, they've managed to move it pretty well. They'll start from the 35 with 14.07 to go in the game. Means. Another tough run out to the 40, maybe the 41-yard line. Matt Stevens, the strong safety, stopped it. Natron means 16 carries, 134 yards. That's the best ever against the Bills in postseason. Had runs of 62, 30, and 10 included in that total. Brunel under pressure. Throws on the run complete to McCardell. There is a flag down in the secondary. That's what the athletic ability of Mark Brunel will do for you. I mean, he took a pound and even after he got rid of the football. But he gets out, makes a play, and focuses downfield and throws the ball. He is so dangerous on the run, and his receivers do a good job of keeping their patterns alive. And the other thing that he's done is he just doesn't take off to run with the ball. He runs to try and make a play to throw it down the field. Holding defense, number 22. Penalties declined. First down. Penalty called on Burris. They'd much rather have the play.
Burris on McCardell. He's got him locked up, and he keeps him locked up. You can bump him. You can't grab him. Means off the left side. What a nice block out there from Rich Griffith, number 85, who gave him the corner. You know, Mike, when you don't see a safety coming up to force right away, when you see a runner heading towards the corner, it means that the wide receivers are working hard. They're either running them off or else they're coming in and blocking on a safety. It's a gain of five, so second and five. Clock turning. 12 minutes, 46 seconds left to go from Buffalo. Two tight ends, they'll go with Means. Ran right through Spielman and picked up four. That's how strong Natron Means is. Boy, you talk about two battering rams. Natron Means and Chris Spielman locking it up one-on-one. -on -one. Means trying to use the straight arm, and Spielman's just going to bulldog him down. Third and a yard coming up for Jacksonville. They're just outside Buffalo's 30-yard line, down by a touchdown. Maybe another dose of Natron. Means dives. He needed to get the 30, and it looked like he got across it. Covington led the defensive charge. Boy, that's just great individual effort. He sees where he has to get to, and he just fires in submarines to try and get to the 30. Tom Coughlin anxiously watching from the sideline. I don't think he was really thrilled with the mark. If it's on the line, he should have made it. They'll bring the chains in from the near side with 11.46 left in the game. Boy, there have been some missed and made by inches. No, he just was short. It was over the line. Fourth and in inches. Tom Coughlin never even turned his head toward the punt or field goal team. This is go for it all the way. And they better run the play they called because they won't be able to hear to change it. And, and it's really Mark Brunel can't fool around and try a hard count or try and draw Buffalo offside. They have to get up to the line of scrimmage, get set, and run the play, and just try and get below the defensive lineman and create just a little crease for the back. Nearly 70,000 on their feet. Eighth best in the league on fourth down conversions this year. Means second effort got the first down he didn't have it initially as Buffalo did a great job of standing him up but means kept driving they're inside backers Marlo Perry and Damian Covington get a chance to make a play because Ted Washington number 92 in the middle blows this thing up he just stops everybody right at the line means actually runs into him an extra effort gets the first down New set of downs for Jacksonville at the Buffalo 29-yard line. Brunel, short set, then throws over the middle. McCardell inside the 10 to the 9. Burris makes the tackle. Boy, when Brunel starts moving around in a pocket, he makes things happen. What great patience, too. He starts to run and still focuses downfield and finds Keenan McCardell. Now, McCardo, does, he's been with Brunel long enough. He knows he's got to keep working to a hole. He's got to find a place for him to get him the football. This is where Jacksonville has had trouble. In the red zone. They need a touchdown to tie. Means. Pushing the pile inside the two to the one yard line. Excellent blocking by the front wall and Lachey Master. You know, Mike, that's attitude. Th that is Natron means just wanting to get to the end zone. He gets locked up about the 10-yard line with the pile. Watch this. I mean, right now, he's entering the pile. 
Right there. Now, it's just attitude. He's driving Spielman back. Look at this. Look at the power. Spielman doing everything he can. Natron means with the game of a lifetime so far. Second and goal. Means. Not this time as they try to go wide and he will lose yardage. Bryce Pop number 95 got him. Now this is a huge play for Jacksonville. Well, you know, they, they seem to get down close and then that next play sets them back just a little bit. I still believe you, you have to put the ball in the hands of the guy who can make the play for you. And in the case of the Jacksonville Jaguars, it's their quarterback, Mark Burnell. They'll spot the ball back at the two. And you almost wonder if they don't make it on third down, would Tom Coughlin go on fourth? Four wide receivers set. Brunel is great on the quarterback draw. Instead, he throws it quickly to Smith. Touchdown! Oh, what a play. And what a call by Kevin Gilbride. Instead of trying to have the guys work in and make Brunel hold the football, it's a quick screen. Basically, it's what the Atlanta Falcons ran so successfully against Jacksonville last week. It's just a step back, quick screen to the flanker. You got to be careful of your rush. Now all of a sudden, Smith just does a terrific job individually of breaking Matt Stevens' tackle and getting in the end zone. Sensational drive capped by a sensational play. Hollis will go for the extra point to tie the game again. Tied at 27. 10 plays, 65 yards. Natron Means carried it seven times on the drive. Smith gets the tying touchdown. Eight forty to go from Buffalo. Quite a ball game with Jacksonville and the Buffalo Bills knotted at 27. It may be a case of the last team with a ball wins. Hollis to kick off to Copeland and Moles. Copeland from the one. Seam up the middle and dives out to the 26-yard line. Timeout on the field. 8.30 left in the first wild card game. 8.30. As we said earlier, the Bills have never lost a playoff game here in Rich Stadium, compiling an all-time NFL best record of 9-0. The last Bills playoff loss in Buffalo, you have to go back to War Memorial Stadium, New Year's Day 1967. The Kansas City Chiefs behind two touchdowns from Mike Garrett defeated the Bills 31-7 in the AFL championship game. The Chiefs won the right to meet the Green Bay Packers in Super Bowl I. Jack Kemp, the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. Jim Kelly does not want to join that list. First and 10, they'll whistle this one dead. Jacksonville saying Buffalo moved. Buffalo saying Jacksonville was offside. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Number 83, five-yard penalty, first down. Here's some trivia for you. The man who scored the first rushing touchdown in Super Bowl history for the Green Bay Packers, Elijah Pitts. And that was against the Chiefs. He is now an assistant coach for the Buffalo Bills. Still got that smile. Penalty against Buffalo. First and 15 with eight and a half minutes left to go in a tie ball game. Kelly with time. Wide open over the middle. Quinn Earl. Mickey Washington makes the tough tackle, but he's after the 47-yard line. Again, Mike, it's that offensive line giving Jim Kelly an opportunity to step up and make the throw. Quinn Early never really gets enough credit for his speed, but he's the guy that can run. This time he just settles comfortably where Kelly can find him in the soft part of the zone. Boy, were the safeties deep in that zone. Early nine catches, 122 yards. Brilliant game for Quinn Early. Kelly throws short this time off of the fingertips of Thurman Thomas. And Kevin Hardy scrambling to try to get the pick. 
you know, that's one that he's going to see in his sleep in slow motion. I mean, the ball just hanging there and the feet just spinning away trying to get to it. Kelly just tries to dump this off over the middle. Little crossing pattern underneath to the back. It's tipped up. And Hardy just loses his footing. Makes everybody hold their breath. Kelly on second and ten. Draw to Thomas. Brackens was right there along with Lagerman. Both smelled out the draw. And that's going to bring up a third and about seven. Time becoming a factor as we approach seven and a half minutes. Kelly with all day. Now under pressure. Got away from Lagerman. Lost the ball. Got it back. And Jim Kelly trying to make something happen. He fumbled. Beasley has it. There is the turnover that gets it even at two and two. And Kelly is still down as Beasley came up with a loose ball. What a break for Jacksonville. Oh, what an effort by Jim Kelly, too. I mean, he's limping. And he's down on the field now. Oh, he just, the protection was great. Good job by Jacksonville's secondary. You see this from the reverse angle. He's got all day on the fake. He's looking, 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 nowhere to go. Now, Lagerman knocks the ball out of his hand. He picks it up, still has the presence of mind to say, all right, I got to make a play. I have to make a play. Fighting off people and then just takes a shot. Boy, he may have been down before that ball came out, too. It looked like the knee hit. Oh, his knee is down. This is a, watch, watch his knee. Right? Right there. The knee is down. The ball is still in his hands. The ball is still in his hands. Now the other knee is down, and the ball comes out. And what a shame to have a call like that in what has been a, a beautifully officiated game. Well, here's another one. I mean, Kelly locks up. You know, you can say it's hard to tell when the ball comes out. I don't think so. No, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Absolutely. Huge break for Jacksonville. Stewart is the running back on first and ten. Brunel to throw. He's got it complete to Smith, and Smith across the 50 into Buffalo territory at the 44, a gain of 14. So after a slow start, Jimmy Smith has come on. Offensively, Jacksonville just continues to put pressure on this Buffalo defense. Buffalo in the second half has not had a chance to slow down this Jacksonville offense. And Tony Baselli just doing a fabulous job on Bruce Smith. Means back in on first and ten. Natron Means gliding along the line and then powers his way down to the 40. Jacksonville needs about another eight, nine yards to be within field goal range. Mike, that's that right side of that Jacksonville line. Waddell the center, Tilski the right guard, and Leon Searcy the right tackle. They're just moving along like a big freight train, just creating a little bit of a wall and allowing Natron to pick and choose where he wants to go. Means 23 carries, 157 yards. He'll be first in line for the Whirlpool. Means again, wrapped up by Big Ted Washington. Well, you know what Kevin Gilbride is thinking. Nice drive, two, three first downs, score. It's over. Hey, listen, last time Kevin Gilbride was in this stadium when he was coaching Houston, not too many good things happened to him. No, House of Horrors. That was the 35-3 lead that evaporated. Bruce Smith trying to make something happen for his defense, third and seven. Brunel under pressure, throws complete. McCardell with a catch and then makes the move. Keenan McCardell inside the 30. The catch, he was well short of the first down. Another great individual effort. And a great individual effort by Mark Brunel to just get this off. Phil Hansen is hanging all over him, Michael. Look at Brunel. Hansen's got him. Brunel just somehow gets this off before Pop gets there. McCardell fights off one. Jeff Coat misses him. 
comes back inside. Perry can't catch him. And with him hanging that ball out there, Gilbride's throat, heart is in his throat. I have to be honest with you. I thought Brunel was throwing the ball away. Instead, he keeps the sticks moving. Natron means. Still powering his way forward inside the 25 to the 23. And Natron is pumped up. You know right now the Jaguars can smell it. And Tony Baselli, as this game has gone on, has just gained more and more confidence for Tom Coughlin in this Jaguar offense. Here he is against Bruce Smith. Now he's just taking Smith everywhere. Second and three, clock turning, four minutes left. Natron hit in the backfield and dunked. Another big play by David White. You know, you got to get into good clock management when you're in this part of the game and you're the quarterback. The problem is the Buffalo Bills, if they're going to move the ball down the field, they don't need a lot of time to do it. So you, they're not going to have it either. You know, you just don't want to run here and kick the field goal and put your defense out on the field. You've got to try and make a first down. From here, it would be a 44-yard attempt in windy conditions. Mast in the single setback. Brunel throws, and it's dropped. McCardell couldn't hold it. Irvin may have gotten a hand in. Ken Irvin does a terrific job on Keenan McCardell. He doesn't give him a lot of room to work. Bumps him at the line, working hard, not holding him too bad. Now he's right there. This is a 45-yard field goal attempt by Mike Hollis. And the wind is coming from his left, Mike. So if he tries to hook it in, he could stay out to the right. To give Jacksonville the lead. It hits the post and goes through. What a shot by Jacksonville. Hollis from 45 off the right upright, and it's good. The Jaguars lead in the playoff game at Buffalo. Rose Bowl, New Year's Day on ABC Sports. The expansion Jaguars have taken a three-point lead with 3.07 to go at Buffalo. Molds from the eight. To the 30-yard line. Let's go to Mark Malone. Mark. Mike, Todd Collins will be going into quarterback. Jim Kelly has suffered a blow to the head. They fear a concussion. Currently, they're loading him up on a cart here on the sideline, and it'll take him inside for observation. So it's up to the second-year quarterback for Michigan. Mike? Mark, he has played in seven games this year, started the three that Kelly was out, a guy with a quick delivery, great mechanics. But what a tough position to come into. And also, the K-gun is not his strength. A more, more sophisticated, back-to-the-huddle, up-to-the-line of scrimmage style of offense is what he's comfortable with. He has Thurman Thomas with 2.57 to go in the game. Straight back to throw. Under pressure and sacked at the 20. Jacksonville putting on the pressure. Clyde Simmons with a brilliant game, including the interception return for a touchdown. That was his second sack. And, Mike, this puts a lot of onus on Jim Schaffner and Tom Bresnahan. Bresnahan, the offensive line coach, Schaffner, the quarterback coach, because they now have to start calling the game. Kelly calls a lot of the game himself. And for that, now with Collins out there, it's a little different. Second and 18. Collins forced out of the pocket, and Johnson drops the ball and is then leveled by Robert Massey. Lonnie Johnson has had a problem with drops this year. And just the sight of Jim Kelly going off on the cart, Joe, makes you wonder about the future of this franchise and that core group of veterans that they have. It makes you wonder about Jim Kelly because he has taken a pounding in this football game, trying to make plays. He's thrown the ball, I think, very well all day. They still have not had any presence of Thurman Thomas in this football game. And I think that makes a big difference for Buffalo. The winner of this game goes to Denver for the next round. Third and 18. K 
Collins chased out of the pocket again. That's Brackens. And Brackens got to him just as he threw. Now Buffalo is going to have to punt it away. They have all of their timeouts left plus the two-minute warning. Tony Brackens starts his rush, and then he keys on the quarterback. He is incredible at accelerating after the quarterback. Watch this. He gets caught inside, both of them blocking him. Now he sees Collins, and he mirrors his movement. And then he accelerates to make a play. Collins just lucky he got it off. Chris Hudson awaits the punt at his own 35-yard line. Moore with a beauty. Hudson signals fair catch, makes it all the way back at the 25. A 53-yard clutch punt by Moore. And let me tell you something. It doesn't seem like much, but the fact that Chris Hudson decided to fair catch that ball is really smart. Now you don't risk an in-the-back block. You don't put your offense in a hole, and you, you comfortably just catch it and go do your job. And you're not going to fumble it on the return. Marv's defense has come up with a couple of big plays. They have to come up with a big stop here. Somebody from Jacksonville said early in the week, it's simple. We win two, Indianapolis wins two, the AFC Championship game is in Jacksonville. They're about to take their first step. To steal a line, do you believe in miracles? Well stolen. And Al is standing by working on another line in Dallas. Natron Means slugs his way up to the 30. And Buffalo will use the two-minute warning. They have all of their timeouts left. Two minutes to go from Buffalo with the Jaguars up by three. Two minutes left in our first AFC wildcard game. Two minutes to go, a three-point lead for Jacksonville. They have a second and five at their own 30. Buffalo with all of its timeouts left. This is the longest postseason home winning streak in the NFL. It is on the line right now. The Bills have never lost a playoff game at Rick Stadium. Natron Means pulls his way for the first down. He has had an incredible day this afternoon. 28 carries, 171 yards. He's basically taken this young football team on his shoulders and said, listen, I'm going to get it done. Good job up front. Good job of blocking up front. Again, this time they run behind Baselli. Little counter right here. They kick out the safety coming in, and it's all Natron. He would simply not be denied. ABC Sports coverage of the AFC Wild Card is brought to you by Circuit City, the choice for price selection and service. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals used most. Nike. And by Breathe Right Nasal Strips for nasal congestion, snoring, and easier breathing. They're not breathing easy in Buffalo. They're holding their breath, hoping for a miracle right now. Mike Jacksonville has to continue to try and run the football. They're not in a kneel-down situation yet. Two timeouts left for Buffalo. They can stop it only twice more. Means protecting the ball gets out to the 38-yard line. It's a game Natron means we'll look back on maybe 20 years from now and say, boy, this was fun. Well, the touch, the, the big run he made, the 62-yarder early in the game was a great run. But the one he made for the touchdown where he did it all by himself was one of the finest runs I've seen. Your ABC primetime lineup for tomorrow night starts with America's Funniest Home Videos. That's at 7 o'clock Eastern. Then at a special time, 8 Eastern and 7 Central, Al Pacino and Chris O'Donnell star in Scent of a Woman on the ABC Sunday Night Movie of the Week. Another wonderful performance by Al Pacino. Hoo-ah! about the best way to describe this football game, too. Oh, absolutely. At front, 
Searcy, Tilski, Waddell, Coleman, Baselli all have done a terrific job with a darn good defensive front five of the Buffalo Bills. We have seen Baselli twice live this year. You couldn't be possibly more impressed with a tackle. A career high for Natron Means. He'll get another crack at it. Piles across the 40 to the 41-yard line. The Bills used their last timeout. So if Jacksonville comes up with a running play or a complete pass on third down, the clock would continue to run. If they have to punt, Buffalo would get the ball back with maybe 45 seconds to go in the game. It has been an unbelievable two weeks for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it is all hinged on field goals. A week ago at home in front of a sellout, crazed crowd, Morton Anderson, who had made 62 in a row from 30 or inside, misses with no time left on the clock. And this afternoon, Hollis from 45 yards, doink and through. Well, Tom Coughlin has seen his football team just play really, really solid offense in the second half and in the first half just literally hang on by the thin skin of their teeth because of the plays of their defense. Third and six, a first down, and it's over. Mean stuffed at the line of scrimmage. And now Jacksonville will let the clock run as long as it can before they have to punt it away. Mike, it's going to run down to about 55 seconds before they're going to have to kick the ball away. you got to figure Buffalo's going to get the ball back with somewhere in the neighborhood of 47 to 50 seconds. I would think that Jeff Burris, the smart thing to do here again would be to fair catch it and save the time on the clock. The other option is, do you come after Brian Barker? They did earlier in the ball game when they had him backed up in the end zone. But that was only because he was only 10 yards deep, Mike. I think him being back at the normal depth now, you risk a chance of a penalty. If it happens, you wind up running time off the clock. Again, time becomes the most important thing now for the Buffalo Bills. Jacksonville will take a timeout. They want to talk about this and set up their protection for Barker. His job, just get rid of it. If he gets off a good kick, that's fine. But don't get it blocked. Don't fumble the snap. The thing, too, it, you know, as a kicker, you, you really, you're looking for five-second increments right now. Can I, can I keep five seconds of the clock running? And in Burris's case, can I save five seconds for my offense? Because you know what Buffalo's offense can do. We talked about it. Todd Collins has made big plays in big games all year for this offense. I think what you do is you kick it out. If you're Jacksonville, you kick it down to Burris, make him field it. Hopefully he'll run with it, run some more time off. The thing for Burris, fair catch it and save some time for your team. The NFC wild card game following our broadcast from Buffalo. Barker gets rid of it. Burris, no fair catch, all the way back to the seven. Trying to get outside, got a great block. Knocked out of bounds with 42 seconds left. Keep in mind, Buffalo needs only a field goal to tie. And the other thing is, Christie was kicking them before the game from 56 yards and making them. Going in this direction. Christie warming up on the sideline, hoping for a chance. They have no timeouts. Jacksonville can't play this real soft, Mike. I mean, they can't give these receivers a lot of room in the middle of the football field. If they catch it, they've got to get their hands on them right away. Jim Kelly taking off on a cart with a possible concussion. Collins on in his stead. Under pressure. Screen to Thurman Thomas. What a job by Beasley to cut him off and keep him in bounds. The tough thing about that, Mike, is your offensive line was over on the sidelines trying to block for a screen. Now it takes time for them to get out to the middle of the field again. That play itself, a slow developing play and took a long, long time. Collins kills it with 20 seconds left. Now they really have a problem. If they complete a pass that is long enough for them to get a first down, they can't stop the clock. The best he can hope for, Collins can get up and try and ground it. The thing is, they've got to get all the way to Jacksonville's 40 
to have a legitimate shot at trying to kick a 58 or 60 yard field goal. Collins had it knocked loose. Still loose, and Jacksonville has it inside the 20. Cinderella is alive, and she lives in Jacksonville, Florida. I can feel the floor shaking because the state of Florida is rocking right now. Tony Brackens, we talked about it, Mike. He just makes big plays because of his great athletic ability. Now he starts up the field, goes inside of Fina, pushing him. Thurman Thomas can't help, but he's not, he's not, not going to be denied. And then Collins just drops the football. It just falls out of his hands. Tony Baselli on the sideline, who has had a game for the ages against the legendary Bruce Smith, celebrates. And Marv Levy has seen the end of his season and maybe the end of an era for his core of great players that took him to four Super Bowls. Jim Kelly told us earlier in the week there will be changes made in Buffalo before next season. How many remains to be seen? Jacksonville kills the clock. What an unbelievable performance by a young football team that really didn't know quite was a, what was ahead for them. But the one thing they did is they didn't get down when mistakes went against them. A stunning upset loss, the first ever at home for the Buffalo Bills in the first in the playoffs. Let's go to Leslie Visser. Leslie. <laughs> well, they'll be joyous in Jacksonville, and this is one of the reasons why, Tony Baselli, talk about the game you had today and against Bruce Smith. It was a real important game, and I just like to thank God, you know, giving us the chance to come out here. Uh, Bruce Smith's a great player. I knew I had my hands food. Nice, you know, I just thank the Lord for giving me the ability to come out here. Uh, Natron played a heck of a game. He ran hard, and we just stuck together. It wasn't pretty, but we won. Natron had 170 yards, something like 90 or 100 of them behind you. What were you able that you had confidence in against Bruce Smith? He had only two pressures all day. Honestly, what gave me pre uh, the confidence was the Lord, and I just knew that I, he, if I came out here and played my hardest, uh, Bruce Smith's a great player, but I thought I had the ability just to, con if I concentrate, kept my poise, because he really relies on the crowd a lot, and uh, just concentrate and... Uh, it worked out. Well, it was awfully impressive. Congratulations Thanks. to you. Back to you, Mike. All right. Thank you, Leslie. A remarkable game as the Jacksonville, Jacksonville Jaguars win it 30 to 27 over the Buffalo Bills. For Joe Theismann, Mark Malone, and our entire ABC crew, this is Mike Patrick. Goodbye from Buffalo. Coming up next, Chris Berman and Boomer Esiason back in the studio and the NFC Wild Card game as Minnesota takes on Dallas right after this from our ABC stations. Tonight, we'll...